没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有啊。没有
Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Interschool Esports Championship organized by Royal College Computer Society and powered by none other than Lenovo. And joining me uh, for today is going to be Kitty and myself. I am Tara, and you are going to be joining for the first semi final for Valorant. So we do have Gateway College Candy taking on Lyceum International. Kitty, it has been some time uh, since we got to uh, cast Valorant. Yes, indeed, uh, Terry, good morning. Uh, it's been quite some time. We've had some amazing uh, matches throughout this year, you know. We've had some really amazing tournaments, and uh, I cannot wait to see uh, how these youngsters from these amazing schools uh, play here today. Uh, indeed, and, uh, and a good point there is that uh, all these tournaments that we've been having, we have uh, been seeing uh, these youngsters uh, perform at the highest level as well. We have had 14-15 uh, year olds uh, coming in uh, at, at the top level and performing insanely well. So at the school level, we are going to be interested to see how the rest of them actually stack up. So we know that there are a couple of players who are insanely good at the game at a very young age and now we do yep. have all the schools uh, combined here coming in uh, for this uh, inter-school esports championship to, you uh, you know, uh, show us what they have. And this is going to be a good stepping stone for all of these uh, youngsters to actually get into the top teams and then perform at a higher level uh, going forward. So it's definitely going to be an interesting one to see how uh, how good these players are and how they stack up against the rest as well. Uh, do you have any reference as to who is playing? Do you uh, have a vague idea? Are there any known players that we know from the school level? Uh, I was actually going through, you know, the rosters today uh, in the morning after we got them to see if we actually knew any of the players. Uh, but uh, for me, none of the names actually popped up, which I think is quite interesting because uh, we have two teams that are completely new to me. So I just cannot wait to see how they play. Yeah, and uh, so we'll take a look at the rosters as well here. We do have uh, Team Sura from uh, Gateway College Candy here. We have Chanki, we have Logic, we have HyperX, uh, Tectonic, and Javid, uh, Javad, Javad, I think. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm butchering names. I normally tend to do that. But uh, uh, there you have it, guys. The roster from Gateway College uh, Candy. And they will be going up against uh, Lysim International. Let's take a look at the Lysim International uh, roster as well. And yes, uh, so we have uh, Insane. So uh, Insane is actually, an, uh, I think, uh, is this the same Insane uh, from uh, one of the tournaments that I saw? I think it is. Then uh, we have Kane. We have Proxy. We have Dakas, Dakaski, Dakaski, mm -hmm. and Agent uh, Pat, Patatas. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. guess so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there you have it, guys. That's the roster coming out from Lyceum International Schools. So uh, definitely going to be interesting, like Kitty said, because uh, majority of these uh, players uh, we haven't heard of. And this is going to be a really good stepping stone for them. And the interesting part is that uh, eSports is being held at a school level, I think, you and I both would wish that when we were schooling, this was actually a thing. And so hats off to Royal College uh, Colombo uh, Computer Society for making sure that this is a possibility. And uh, looking at the bracket right now, we have had uh, quite a bit of the games finish up and we are into the semifinal. This is semifinal number one. And uh, we have uh, semifinal number two happening later on in the day. It is going to be uh, Wesley College Colombo taking on Isipatana College Colombo. And that's going to be happening after this. So these are all best of three matchups. And it's going to be a really exciting day of Valorant coming your way. Hopefully the game is ready to go on live and we can uh, get into it. Uh, just before we do get in, a shout out to all our other sponsors as well. So as our goal sponsor, we have SLT Mobitel. You know that they are the fastest connection in the country. If you already do not know this, make sure to get yourself an SLT Mobitel Fiber Line. It is the best possible connection that you can game on in the country. Whether you're gaming or whether you're streaming online, whatever you need, SLT Mobitel Fiber is the way to go. Uh, and then we do have... Uh, uh, the technology partner, Royal College uh, Radio Club joining in, as well as the photography uh, partners, uh, Royal College Photography Society and the Royal College Media Unit uh, joining in as the photography partners and uh, the display partner, laptop.lk. And taking, uh, talking a little bit more about our main sponsor here or uh, the entire event, the title sponsor, Lenovo. Uh, if you guys uh, do not know, Lenovo is uh, probably, for me personally, is one of the best brands when it comes to laptops. Uh, my previous laptop that I was using, I, I'm on a desktop right now, but the previous laptop that I was using uh, for, let's say, I think it was seven years. I think that's a massive lifetime for a laptop and it was a Lenovo. And I used to game on this. And it was a pretty old laptop and it sustained through so many years uh, with so many people. Uh, I mean, uh, we know that technology increases day by day and yearly we have new graphic cards come out, new processors, new generation of processors coming out. Uh, but uh, this Lenovo laptop that I was using, uh, it got me through my entire esports career when I started off back in uh, 2013. 
Uh, so from 2013 to 2020, I was on this laptop uh, till I uh, bought my back, uh, desktop back in 2019. Uh, until then, I was on this laptop and it served me really well. And it was a Lenovo laptop. I thought I mentioned it because uh, this is actually uh, a customer review coming out. So you know that these laptops are hardy. You know that uh, uh, these can sustain you throughout time. And it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but with that, hopefully we will get the game live in a short while. But we do have the Call of Duty Mobile Championship happening tomorrow. That is the semifinals for Call of Duty Mobile happening tomorrow. And the grand finals event is going to be a physical event on the 8th of December. Uh, that is uh, going to be at uh, the Royal College. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, at Royal College premises. So it, that's definitely going to be interesting because we haven't had uh, a lot of physical events uh, due to the pandemic and a lot of reasons uh, within the country with the economic situation. Uh, but Royal College Computer Society had come forward and put up a land event. And this is going to be the second land event that I'm uh, attending for the year, which is insane because uh, esports was a thing. Uh, if it's not a land event, it's not even an event for the longest time. And we have had a lot of online events and now the land events are coming back. And so hats off Royal College Colombo Computer Society for making it happen. Uh, I personally love lands. Uh, it's always more exciting when it's, you know, physical and all the players are there. The hype is there, the energy, energy is there. And it's absolutely insane. I was someone who absolutely loved the land environment and it's going to be great to get back into it, especially at a school level, because uh, we know that uh, when you come to uh, school level sporting events, the hype is absolutely insane. Uh, whichever sport that you play and esports is no different. Uh, the hype is going to be absolutely insane uh, during this land event, which is going to be happening on the 8th from 1.30 p.m. onwards. But uh, going into the game, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, our first map is going to be on bind, uh, Kitty. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, mm -hmm. the video here. What are the maps that we are going to be looking at? Uh, yes, yeah, so the first map which we have obviously is going to be bind and it's going to be uh, Surya who's going to be attacking first. Uh, mm -hmm. Map number two will be Fracture, the pick coming in from uh, Alpha Q. And uh, if we do go all the way, the decider will be ascent. Also, Alpha Q will be the first on the attack. So that means the bands that we had, the first ban from Alpha was Pearl, followed by a ban on Breeze. And then uh, the, the other bands were Icebox and Haven. So uh, looking at the first map terror, uh, Bind, is I, I believe it's the map that we've seen played the most by literally every single team in these past two tournaments. So uh, it's always great to see a Bind map. And, you know, next season, Bind is going to be removed from uh, the competitive uh, rotation. So it's sad to see it go, but uh, yeah, this is going to be a last hurrah before uh, that does happen. Yeah, indeed. Uh, definitely going to be sad to see this map go out. Uh, I think uh, I'm quite new to Valorant uh, in terms of a lot of the people who have been playing it. And my first tournament game when I did play, I played for fun with a bunch of my friends uh, because I'm out of the competitive scene. We just wanted to take part for fun. And the first game was on a bind, which went on for uh, 44 rounds, if I'm uh, not mistaken, which was absolutely, I absolutely loved it. There's a lot of stress. I haven't been in that type of stress for a long time. And then coming into the competitive scene again, and uh, coming into bind, I absolutely love the map. Uh, it's, it's a lot to play around with, especially with the teleports uh, in play. And it's an amazing map for raids. I think uh, I think after split, uh, I think uh, raids shines on bind mostly just because of uh, hookah control uh, through the teleport. It's absolutely insane from uh, raids. And there's a lot of uh, such, a, uh, such a place that you can do on bind. And I think uh, for a good raids player, this map is absolutely heaven. Uh, absolutely. And of course, speaking about the other duelists we've seen on this map, uh, we've seen uh, Deadshot from Whiffmasters play an insane Euro on this map, you know, just uh, making full use of his own TPs as well as the TPs he can find uh, across the map. So that is what we've seen in terms of duelists when it comes to playing on Bind. And uh, let's take a look at the other agents that we see as well. So as we can see, as you said, that uh, we have the raised on either side being the default duelist. And uh, it's interesting to see the chamber. I mean, of course, the chamber nerf did not happen yet. It will happen soon, but so far, uh, chamber is still uh, as broken as it used to be. So uh, we do have uh, the chambers being uh, the default sentinels on either side, uh, but it's going to be uh, Team Surya on attack and uh, they've decided to go with this uh, one initiator and two sentinel pick. It's going to be interesting to see how KJ, uh, you know, comes into the mix because uh, more often than not, we've seen most teams just uh, tending to be on the chamber as the default sentinel so he can, you know, play with his TPs. He's got that one trap to lock down a site. And uh, we would either have probably two initiators or even sometimes two smokes uh, coming in uh, from other sides. So it's going to be interesting to see KJ after a long time because, uh, yep. you know, KJ was a staple on this map, but uh, it's good to see a KJ coming back into life. 
Yeah, indeed. And uh, I think uh, Dallas Sentinel lineup coming out as well. Not something that you see. Uh, you normally uh, tend to see teams go for double controller or double initiator. Mm-hmm. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of the double Sentinels come out for a really long time. Uh, maybe probably the last year or so when the meta kind of changed into that uh, double controller or double initiator. But with that, uh, we do have the match starting up. It's going to be a hookah push coming out from Team Surya here. Uh, no one really inside hookah and there isn't anything. Uh, no trap or what sort looking at it uh, but they are going to get a free entry into hooker this hooker control it's going to get smoked off for the time being yep now mind you there's two players also playing on long that's going to be the Reina and the breach which means they have enough utility to hold this pushback they've got the breaches they've got uh, the aftershocks that can cost everything to work with but now they're slowly rotating it back it's going to be the chamber the first pick here and yes, Russell will get the pick. And you know, the first skill on Rain, especially on the first round, is quite massive because now mm-hmm. uh, you can heal up and it's going to be 150 HP for the Rainer against this uh, in a 4v5. Indeed. And they have called out rooted. I think the chamber was caught off guard. Mm-hmm. He was uh, having his back turned there, uh, walking back down uh, long there on uh, B. Uh, but they have lost one. So it is a 4v5 into the attack here. Uh, they still haven't got real position here. They have rotated back into Hookah. We have all four players rushing through Hookah. It's not going to small. Uh, it's going to get sunned up uh, for the time being. It does not really hit anyone. Breach is going to be in a little bit of trouble. But meanwhile, the peak coming out from Darkski will take out one Kane to pick up Logic as well. The trade is going to be there from Hyper, but uh, Darkski picking up his second there and leaving just the one man alive. And Russell is going to pick up his second kill as well. And with that, Team Surya uh, will lose out on that first piss around. But again, too early to call. Uh, but uh, it seemed a bit uh, a bit of an iffy push coming out from uh, Team Surya there. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I, I believe the fact is, uh, even though uh, the team on, on defense is AlphaQ, uh, the only initiative that they, that they have to work with is the Breach. So in terms of uh, gathering info, not that much, because you only have the Aftershocks, the Concussors to work with. Uh, but also on the side of uh, Team Surya, they have the Fade, which gives you much better info to work with. Uh, in terms of, you know, you have your two Hounds, you have your Leer. So you can gather the info, but still, uh, I believe it was, uh, as you said, the, the, the push coming in from Hookah. They didn't have enough control of Long. And when Chamber went alone, that was just uh, an easy pick for us all there. Indeed. And again, we do have a split coming out here. They are on a save here. We have a couple of ghosts coming out. And meanwhile, Reyna will get taken out. That's a good pick. This is a Spectre recovered. It was a two-man pick through Hookah to uh, take him out. Uh, they didn't recover the Spectre, though. They are going to be backing off, but they're going to be happy with that. That's already a weapon down on the side of uh, Team Alpha Q. Yep, a good pick there coming from Hyper. Nice shot there. Uh, and that is the Reina off the board. But now with that pick taken, they will uh, try to reset a bit. Try to see where there is the least resistance before trying to push in. It's going to be the raise left alone inside of A. So that might be uh, the best place to push. But he does have the pen shells to work with. So they will have to be a bit careful. So info has been taken. Pencha is going to be th- uh, thrown out here, doing quite a bit of damage uh, onto the team. Uh, they will pick up a kill as well here, uh, but the trade is going to be there from uh, Macro there. will take him out. So it's a 3v4 now, and Team Surya will get the plan down. This is massive on a save round. Oh, Logic in the f- meantime finds Kane as well. Uh, things are looking bad uh, for this buy round here. And they do have all the plays in position. They have the Astro Stars to work with. Uh, Timing is quite good for the side of uh, Surya here. They do have, I believe, two Spectres recovered. Yes, indeed. And it's going to be insane left alone. And Scratch that Hyper will clear him off the board as well. A really good eco run coming in from the side of Team Surya to even the scores. Yeah, Hyper picking up three there. One at Hookah on the Brenner and then cleaning out uh, uh, who are the Dark Ski and Insane in the end. And uh, they will uh, clutch that uh, save round there, making it one all here and forcing Alpha Q into a save here. And they are going to be, uh, they recovered multiple Spectres, right? So Team Surya doesn't really have to grab too much here. Yeah, I believe they managed to save uh, three Spectres. And of course, this is uh, in theory their buy round. Mm -hmm. But uh, they might, I believe, be playing a bonus here just to try and get a few more guns off the side of Team Surya. I mean, uh, from Alpha Q, if possible. I mean, but we have Rez uh, moving forward uh, through a shot and uh, hooker control this time. A little bit of emphasis placed uh, by Alpha Q. We have a couple of players, especially because they are on crystal. So they are like looking to play these uh, close range engagements. Uh, Hyper moving forward. We'll get tagged to 47. Uh, it's quite good damage coming off onto him. Pencils will force them back and they are going to be pushing forward. Russell will find one, will immediately get traded by the chamber. So it's a 4v4. 
Yep. This push coming into you know Hookah without using any utility is a bit risky. Because, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit of an echo here. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, uh, strangely enough, is that uh, they don't. Um, the fact that you mentioned that, that they are not using any utility when they do have uh, quite a bit of info gathering that they can use. Uh, haven't been using that to, uh, you know, get uh, information inside Hookah. Meanwhile, Paradas uh, picks up Chucky and Insane Fine Cypher. What are these eco rounds coming out from both teams? <laughs> Leaving the Astra in a 1v3. And in a really precarious position here, right behind the boxes. Sees one. one is good for the kill on Insane. Okay. Oh, my Lord. My good God. The Astra goes <laughs> huge there, picking up three. For a moment, I thought that it was all over. Uh, yes, indeed. I did not think he would get all three kills there, maybe one, maybe two, but even. But still, uh, in the end, he does, uh, you know, have the spectre against those uh, headhunters and the classics, and uh, he wins the gunfight. Yeah, and I think uh, Hyper, it is a good satchel, but it kind of threw mm -hmm. off them as well. Uh, and uh, with the spray uh, spray coming out from the spectre, I mean, you spray and pray, and uh, Marco was able to get that kill off on Hyper, but uh, with the classic, it's a little bit harder for them to hit while uh, he was getting uh, thrown off by that satchel there. Right. So what I was mentioning was the fact that, you know, you have your boom bots, you have uh, your fade utility to actually clear these corners. But for some reason, uh, the tending to White Peak and Patatas is going to be capitalizing off that, getting one kill. So, yeah, they have the utility to work with. Uh, but for some reason, they're tending to dry peak the corners and keep it for post bot. A couple of and trades. They... they try to pick up the weapon. Insane will put him down and will punish him. So it's going to be a 2v4 now. Uh, and Alpha Q making this buy round work here, losing only the one here. Oh. Good readjust there coming out from Insane. White peak for Chunky, not working out. Mm, there you go. Insane, was it 3k or 4k there? I think it, it was, was a 4k. 4k, mm -hmm. yeah, wow. Yeah. It was one kill in, uh, I believe, in Shaos by his teammates, and then four kills just off a shot. Yeah, and with that, we do have the first gun round coming out. Insane has the uh, 24th to work with here. Yeah. And it's yep. going to be a full gun round with uh, Chucky, the only one on half shields. Why isn't a Spectre as well? Not something that you see. Uh, I mean, if you do have the money, why not? The 2D force is going to be held at uh, a shot here. Uh, Belong is going to be held by the Rena yet again. But it's a lot slower push coming out from the side of uh, Team Sura here. And. They're looking to get control of Belong. When you get concussed. Yep, they're trading utility nicely this round. You know, you have the Fate Dogs going in and then uh, trying to capitalize off the Breach charge. Uh, but in the end, it's going to be some utility use. And then finally, we see uh, the Boombot being used to clear off Hookah as well. So that's going to be some position gain uh, this round from Team Surya. And, but of course, Russell is good for one and Kane will get... Uh, Refragged by Chucky and with the layer, nice peak coming from Russell. Good for a second and manages to dismiss off. It's going to be advantage for Alpha Q so far for we three. And as the dust settles, it's going to be once again an aggressive push through the TP. Oh, that's good for two. The trade though with the showstopper, Rena peeks through and is going to be good with that Empress popped. Uh, and they will get the lead here 3 2 now. And this is going to force Team Surya into a save if I'm not mistaken. It should likely be a save coming in from their side. Uh, yep, that was good. That was quite a good round there, coming in from the side of Alpha Q. They traded on the utility nicely. They had uh, the aftershock. Uh, apologies, uh, the fault line is it? Yep. yep. And uh, uh, combining that with the Russell's layer, so you get two easy picks there on B long, and then the TP coming in from uh, the Rays, and a nice alt as well. Indeed, and uh, it is still going to be a gun round here, but uh, maybe short on utility here. And insane playing a close angle is not going to be able to rendezvous out. Logic is going to be there for the trade, so it's a 4v4 here. Pain shell to stop the push coming out from a shot here, and they will be forced to back off. But meanwhile, Russell has pushed all the way into the middle here, will pick off one, and is going to be able to dismiss out for free. Indeed, Alpha Q getting quite aggressive, uh, you know, because I, I believe they've become used to the fact that Team Surya like to play really close together, like just maybe five man uh, to one side. 
So they're capitalizing of this pressure to try and get as much space as possible behind them, and then just get one quick kill and just back off. And it's working quite well for them so far. I believe Patatas does put one player there. Indeed, and he has the showstopper to work with, so it's going to get smoked off for the time being. They have slowed down on the side of uh, Team Sura here, obviously playing in a 3v4 situation. Uh, don't have a lot of utility. I think Kilja has his uh, lockdown, yeah. He's uh, thinking about using it. Uh, might be the only way that they recover this round, unless they do manage to uh, find Paratas for free. It's going to be a tough one. They are going to be pushing forward now. Killjoy walks in uh, for free. The Astral Devil is going to be used by Parada speaks through. The trade is going to be there from Chakets. Makes it a 2v3 now. Time running out. The Leer is going to get broken. 10 seconds left on the clock. The Reyna peeks through. Manages to get one and dismisses. While Darkseid, they go for that 1-2 peak to clean things out. And Alpha Q gets a two-round lead here. And this time, definitely forcing uh, Team Surya into a save. The only man with money here is going to be Marco. And they committed the Astral Divide into that as well. Yep. Uh, I mean, I, I did think maybe Patatas might use uh, the result uh, to maybe try and uh, keep the pushback. But in the end, he managed to get two kills uh, with just his bundle, or was it a phantom? And yeah, doing enough damage. And in the end, it was uh, the, cleanup, the cleanup crew, Russell and, uh, and uh, the, the Brimstone, able to clean things up. So another good round in the side of Alpha Q. It's going to be a bit of a broken buy coming in from Team Surat now. They have uh, a few Spectres here and there, and uh, two Sheriffs as well, but insane. The open hand is good for the first peak, and he will TP out of there. Yeah, and that's the first operator coming into play in this uh, matchup, and it's going to be good for the time being. Uh, they still haven't really got any uh, sort of ground here. And I think it goes back to what you were saying, right? We do have Team Surya uh, playing as five. No real map control being taken. And uh, if needed, Paradas could have taken control of showers here, uh, even a shot. Uh, they haven't really pushed through, though. Uh, so. They have uh, got, Team Surya has map control just for free here, just because they haven't pushed forward. Right, and combining that with the fact that Surya is tending to dry pick a lot of angles, mm -hmm. even though they have uh, the prowlers and the layers to work with, is kind of uh, making it a bit easier for Alpha Q to hold those angles and just get free picks uh, with the operator like Insane just did. Uh, Pain Shells uh, did try to uh, force uh, Dakaski out of a position there from. Uh, lamps, but he is going to be holding it for the time being. Lamp, uh, meanwhile, showers push coming out from two players here. Uh, the chamber and the fade pushing through uh, showers. Yep, and mind you, the showstopper is in the hands of Potatas. He could uh, use it in the last few seconds to try and hold back the push a few more seconds longer if he decides to do so. And we have two more smokes in the hands of Dukaski as well. So the last 10 seconds of the round, and with the eco by Marco, is Marco. good for one. So there is no brimstone army. He's going to plant, but inside the smoke, not going to work out. Patadas picks through, and oh, Hyper will find that kill. Massive Russell comes in, takes out Chunky, making it a 2v3 now. Russell does have another layer. He throws it out, does not pick through. It has the second layer as well. Aftershock here, trying to clean out that cubby area, not really finding anyone. Hyper, needs to be careful. Hyper will pick through, not going to be able to find the kill, and insane to clean things up. And uh, they did get the plant on the eco, but maybe they could have clutched that round out. I thought they might have had it uh, with those uh, uh, picks coming in uh, on entry. They've managed to find the brimstone as well as a uh, hyper on the res, but mm -hmm. not being able to close out the gun disadvantage, just uh, working against them. Absolutely. So the scoreline is going to be 5-2 in favor of uh, Team Alpha Q. Uh, they do have the showstopper to work with, but in the hands of Team Surya, they do have... Uh, the Fade Alts, they have the Lockdown as well as the Tour de Force in the hands of uh, the Chamber. So it's going to be, I believe, uh, a full buy coming in from both sides. Of, uh, no, I, I believe that was a, a, half round, a half buy coming in from the side of Team Surya last round. So I do wonder if they have enough credits for this. I believe they do. So yeah, it's going to be a full buy coming in from either team. And once again, it's going to be full play stacked towards B. Uh, from the side of Team Surya. And meanwhile, Showstopper coming out from Patatas will find logic. So there is no lockdown for Team Surya now. And uh, we spoke about this. Patatas, uh, like, as soon as you realize that they are playing towards one side, uh, you are mm -hmm. able to push for free. And he is able to push forward, get one, and up back off as well for absolutely free there. The operator from Insane will put Chamber down, uh, leaving Rays. 
uh, he is uh, not. Uh, he's looking to dry pick this. The shot misses, and he will be able to rendezvous out. So three v five yet again on the side of Team Surya here, uh, in a bit of a tough situation. They have slowed things down here. Patatas, oh, Hyper makes noise there. And Patatas will pick. Uh, very unfortunate. I think that uh, small jump there made noise and gave the information enough for Patatas to pick through. And now Marco is going to be uh, there as well. He makes sound as well. He's trying to back off. And he will be able to, Patatas manage to go into Kabi here. Has uh, taken a lot of control here uh, in a shot. But the spike is rotating back towards uh, B here. They are looking to save these two vandals here. They are in a tough situation, not really going to be able to push into sight. It's a 5v2. They will be saving the vandals. Yes, indeed. Another good run coming in from the side of Alpha Q. The scoreline is 6 2. And as we said, you know, it's the same thing which keeps happening. Uh, they peak as soon as they know this, the team is going to the other side. They get one pick and they just uh, back out of there. And so far, that strat has been working for Alpha Q quite well. They keep managing to, you know, remove the utility that Team Surya has on their board quite early, which means that Team Surya is left alone uh, without actually having any utility to try and aggress into the side. They keep losing the lockdown. Uh, they keep losing uh, the Prowlers and the uh, Delir. So it's becoming a bit hard to, you know, get the site afterwards. Indeed. And uh, we still haven't seen a default coming out from uh, Team Surya, but they did decide to do that. And meanwhile, Insane gets another pick here. Uh, good repositioning from him you from uh, A side to B side okay. here, just uh, playing around with that operator oh and keeping uh, Team Surya just in the uh, Insane. Uh, Marco mi managed to find Paradas. Insane finds another there. Uh, the Killjoy lockdown is going to be placed here from Team Surya to take control of A side, and they will get the plant down with that. But meanwhile, the push coming from behind here, we have the Reyna picking up, uh, coming in from behind. Insane finds another here Heart onto Marco, destroyed. making it a 2 v logic inside lamps. Will pop the molly for the time being. High for people who manages to find the operator on the same uh, after shot, uh, forcing logic out. Logic is going to be rotating back around. Uh, they are going to try and uh, defuse this. Logic will find there at the last one year. enemy remaining. Trades coming out. Uh, Kane manages to find two quick kills onto Hyper as well as that kill joint. Interesting crosshair. What do you think about your day, is it? Uh, I've seen crosshairs like this throughout the tournaments. We've seen uh, Scrim, especially, oh, yeah. having some really weird stuff, and uh, this just complements Done exactly here. what uh, teams like to do. I mean, does this work? I do not know, but uh, Kane <laughs> seems to be doing quite okay with it. It did. Uh, I mean, yeah, majority of the time that Scrim changes around with his, uh, plays around with his uh, crosshair is when he's trolling, and when they know that they have the game in the bag. But to be able to uh, play continuously right with this crosshair at this level, mm, Interesting. Might, right might, might, might work. On, I might check it out. Who knows? Yeah. You want to play? Let's play. So that was a, a really close round. Coming out. Oh, the The massive push. A quick round coming out from Alpha Q here. Absolutely. And Russell picks up another one to Marco. And using that bridge to absolute perfection. Pushing through B long. Reading Team Surya to a T there. Yeah, why do you need a crosshair when you can use a utility like that? <laughs> Just uh, normally what you see uh, on uh, B long is uh, you run this with a jet so that he can dash forward. And to mm -hmm. be able to do that with the Reyna at that speed uh, and being successful yep. with it. Oof. A really good round coming there from uh, Alpha Q, a really aggressive round. I mean, so far they've been playing off uh, how Team Surya played, but this time they decided to be a bit more aggressive, as in a, a full, in, full on aggressive push. And uh, yeah, that was a flawless round coming in from them. And holding this, this angle is going to be insane. Quite close with the operator there. And uh, expected by the KJ, and he will TP out. I did lose a little bit of XP there, but he's uh, still quite healthy. Uh, meanwhile, they are uh, still looking to it. Now they have gone for a bit of a default. This is the first time they are defaulting, and the read again from Alpha Q has been a really good. They don't really rotate out of sight. They are good at holding uh, for the time being. Oh, Patatas, uh, the logic has got to be sad with that. That's unfortunate. Getting a shot through the center. Once taken down by Hyper on that Guardian. 
uh, to a wall bank and Kane does have uh, one more flash and jump on the side. Russell meanwhile has pushed to find the kill on Chucky, finds another one uh, with that Empress leaving them in a 2 situation. Uh, Russell still trying to fight out here, instant coming in with the operator, they, uh, uh, they do have the spike so uh, going to be a tough one. One enemy not remaining. Not going to be able to find it. Russell picks up a third kill, leaving the last one like the chamber. Fight up the ball. Four patatas will be the cleanup crew there, making it a nine-two here, going to the last round before the half. And Alpha Q just showing dominance after a shaky start. Uh, after that pistol round, uh, they are doing absolutely well here. Yes, indeed, Alpha Q. So far, running away with the game. Uh, they are controlling the pace. They are controlling the aggression and. Uh, I believe we did have a small issue, a connection issue, I believe, from the admin side. So we'll just have to wait a few more seconds uh, until things do get restarted. But so far, looking at uh, the 9-2, that was, what, 11 rounds, which happened so far. Mm -hmm. Troy, what do you think about it? Uh, I mean, uh, like I said, it was a bit of a shaky start for Alpha Q uh, after losing out on that uh, pistol round and they lost the consecutive round afterwards. But after that, I think they stepped up, uh, they read uh, Surya up to a letter. Uh, they play the sites very well, didn't over-rotate. Uh, it's just a better gameplay coming out from Team Alpha Q here. And then even uh, changing up strategies on defense there, uh, we saw uh, Insane moving around with that operator quite a bit and been very successful with it so far. And then also uh, we did see the aggressive side as well on one of those rounds where they did push out with Breach and the Reyna all the way through B-Long. Uh, again, these are very unexpected things uh, when you uh, play like, you know, five, six rounds the same way and then when you change up strategies uh, immediately, it just uh, did catch... Uh, Surya off guard here because they do have ways to stop it. It's just that you're not expecting it and you're not ready for it because right. uh, when, when the blind came out from B-Long there, right? They do have the pain shells to work with. They can uh, stop the push coming through B-Long because the raise was actually there. But it's just that he's not ready for it and he wasn't expecting it uh, and it just the reaction uh, didn't exactly happen the way and they managed to get uh, just uh, three kills off of that push coming through B-Long. And again, it uh, comes down to how well you read the other team, uh, especially when it comes to uh, high-level games, very high-level games. Uh, what we have seen on the international stage as well is that uh, it, it, it's a lot to do with how you mix up your strategies and how well you read the opposing we, side as we well. Survive. And AlphaQ mm -hmm. has uh, been doing that in, uh, I mean, obviously, almost all the rounds, they have been reading really well. Meanwhile, 24 is going to be popped by Insane this time around. And going to be off showers, will get taken down by Chamber. Good shot coming out from him. You want to fight it! Yeah, they will find an. Uh, was that a discount or a dig? Oh, sorry. Uh, they did only find one onto the Chamber, so it's going to be a 4v5. Face your fear! And at this time, they are uh, in the nightmare. They're using the prowlers and, and the apple device as well. Find the other side, and they will get the spike down. It's going to be a 5v4 so far, and Logic will follow suit. That's going to be Patatas off the board. The showstopper will get popped. Which will really be back in this a bit, but the Kaski... From behind. We're good for one. Uh, Russell, in the meantime, will get the trade here. Two v three now. Russell, for more. Good throw with the uh, Leah there. there. They are both together. But they are playing for this post plant here. Not really going to pick through. The tap on the spike. Oh. One enemy remaining. Now, and they will find Russell and... Oh. I will be up, but Kim takes out one, but going to be the one two pick coming out. Clean it up here. It's going to be a 9 3 half here. Switching sides. Will the curse reign supreme is going to be the question. Can Team Surya come back from this deficit? Absolutely. The dreadful 9 3 curse to end the first half. It's going to be Surya on three rounds and uh, Alpha Q uh, taking nine as we head on into the second half. A really good uh, last round there from uh, Team Surya. That was uh, an aggressive push from them. They had all the utility to work with and they absolutely demolished them. I got the site perfectly. I believe it was a 5 week 3 when the spike went down. And uh, they held on to it and uh, a really good round to end the first half. So now, as we head on into the second half with Surya on the defense, it's going to be quite interesting to see how they do it. Especially the attack coming in from the side of Alpha Q. Mind you, they only have the breach to work with as an initiator. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do it uh, with a bit of a lack of info. But also we have uh, the raise and fade combination coming in from the side of Surya as we head on into their defensive half, which means they have uh, some creative ways of using it, you know, com combining uh, the, the bungee with the, the paint shells. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how it works as we head on into the second half. 
Uh, indeed. Uh, so just before we do head into the second half, we will be going in for a very short break. But for those of you who are joining from home, you're joining for the Interschool Esports Championship uh, hosted by the Royal College Colombo Society and powered by none other than Lenovo. We'll be right back after this very short break. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're joining us live for the Inter School Esports Championship organized by Royal College Colombo Computer Society. And we are into the second half of the semi final number one. It is a Lyceum College, uh, Lyceum uh, International, uh, Gateway uh, International from Candy here. And it's Team Surya on the defense now with Alpha Q on the attack. Yep, and uh, to start things off, as I mentioned, the paint shells alongside the punchy is what starts off the uh, defensive half for Surya. Uh, a bit off there on the timing, but managing to do a bit of damage onto Russell there, the Reina. And uh, as the dust settles, it's going to be four players stacked towards the B side with uh, Chamber, which is going to be insane, uh, lurking towards showers in the first few seconds of the round. Yeah. Uh, this time we do see that default with the with insane lurking here so this is the change up uh, of strategies that we have had from both teams here they are playing much more of a default rather than going uh barreling in five man into one side uh but then again we don't see team surya over rotate as well which is a good sign but as i say that the astra is uh, moving towards uh that b side leaving the fade alone in a Right, the, the Lear should be able to maybe spot at least left. one or two players, but I believe uh, they each just got back in time. Uh, they do have uh, the trap towards showers, yeah. but the push comes in. Russell trying to get a few picks there. Pushes in with the breach ability to help him, and the spike should be able to go down. But no Final macro planted. peaks with the kill. Russell finds a second there. as well. Uh, this Vayner has been on fire even in the first half. That's a quick two kills coming out, so makes it a 4v3 now for Team Surya. Uh, gonna be a tough one. Through logic will find one. Russell for the trade, though. Russell picks up his third kill as well. 
Uh, and down to LHD, he has no more overheals left, so he is uh, going to be playing with this. Last player. player standing. Russell finds the fourth as well, and uh, the Kuski uh, with the final kill on the chamber, and a massive round coming out from Russell, and they will clean up the pistol. Uh, they're going to be very happy with that, getting them on double digits, and they will have their first buy on. Do we see a force here coming out from Team Surya? I think they might actually force here. Um, I believe so, because the scoreline is 10-3, and uh, if they lose it, it's going to be 11-3, which is going to be really hard for them uh, to come back from. So I believe a force. Uh, never mind. But so far, as you said, that was a really good round there from Russell. A really quick uh, 4K coming from him uh, with the Ghost in hand. And, you know, the Reyna, especially in the first round, is quite uh, dangerous once uh, he gets healed up to 150 HP. And this time, starting a bit slow, because they are expecting, once again, the raise nades, uh, the paint shells. Uh, to come in, so just giving them uh, that presence, but insane that we take shot onto the chamber. Uh, we'll get the first skill on the board for this round. They will really be pushing forward here, they will find everyone to support, but meanwhile, Patata is coming in with the pinch as they find to the third enemy there from Saki. And uh, insane dancing no around Saki there will get the second kill and leaving the kill joy to take this back one v four. And nothing really will work with other than his uh, pistol in hand. Uh, going to be a tough one. Uh, if he can find at least uh, one kill here, uh, that will be... Uh, I mean, it's going to be okay in terms of uh, damage uh, mitigation here. Uh, they want to get as many spectres off the hands of uh, Alpha Q here going into their bonus. But uh, as uh, in terms of winning the round, it almost gets insane with that first headshot. But not going to be able to uh, find the rest of the shots there. Insane will clean it out. So it's going to be 11-3 uh, now and going to the first full gun round for Surya and Alpha Kill going to be on their bonus uh, with the Spectre saved up here. And the Odin coming out from Logic as well. Yep, Logic deciding to bring in the big guns. It's going to be uh, an Odin in his hands and Macro. I believe he has enough creds to buy a, a Vandal but deciding to stick to the Spectre, is it? Uh, no, I believe. No, half shield and Vandal but he decides to buy the full shield instead. So this time it, it looks to be uh, a B heavy push from Alpha Q as the round starts and yes indeed they were quite aggressive the last round I mean they do have the utility to work with as well the boombox are used to clear up they spot oh, the, uh, the KJ turret the read from Alpha Q is always perfect here. They have gone into the side with just the kills are here. He is out there. Jump to Patatas will satchel forward, not really going to find anything uh, right now. Uh, no real trades happening, it's just a brimstone taking part of the damage and Marana as well. The Odin as well. Russell uh. finds one looking for the second as well. Gets the two quick kills. Manages to dismiss out as well. Will he be able to find Logic? Oh. And he will find Logic. Logic manages to find two Marco with the trade on the way. Now, making the two players standing. Insta heating up, but Insane finds another head on the shot on the Marco. Leaving Saki in a 1v2. And down to 4 HP as well, making it almost impossible. The gun round falling apart for Alpha, uh, sorry, Team Surya here and Alpha Q. Uh, it's just Russell this Reyna going absolute ham here. Indeed, looking quite impossible here for the Fade in a 1v2 on 4 HP. I does see one player, but in the end, insane. Nice. The yeah, trigger discipline will take down Chucky on 4 HP. A really, really good run coming there from the side Mad of Alpha point. Q, and as you mentioned, capitalizing on the aggression of Russell. And mind you, the audacity of Patatas with only Ghost in hand to just saddle in the side and hold off the entire push coming in from the smoke with only a ghost in his hand was quite audacious, I must say that. And the Russell there in elbow, getting three kills, I believe, with a spec in his hand, uh, and just getting the kills that they needed and putting them on match point. The scoreline is 12-3. Alpha Q looking to end this game on a really high note, and uh, yeah, Damn. looking quite good. And having the first game in the bag also, uh, you know, it's a lot uh, going into the second game, and especially with uh, this much of a deficit on the side of Team Surya, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how they reset, uh, because I don't think uh, it's just something to do with more more of strategy than just gunplay. It's just that uh, Team Alpha Q has been reading them very well. But this time, it's going to be a final push oh, 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 and good god, the... <laughs> Insane, just flips onto the chip. Uh, will find one, finds the second onto Hyper as well. Uh, has been, we will find the third kill as well. Looking to pick up an ace here, maybe. Let's see whether he is. And it will be the first ace uh, here in the semi finals. Holding off, and meanwhile, the plant is going to be all the way in B one side. One enemy right. remaining. So much work at A. 
but uh, will uh, they will plant and instead still playing around. So it's Marco and uh, playing around. So shot. Then we'll finally get this down. Here, Marco, ah! uh, My ult's ready. Line. Marco finds oh. the third kill as well. He needs to push right forward there. now because he is uh, playing. Uh, sorry, a uh, macro. Not Marco, my bad. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he's playing against the clock here as well in a one v two. He needs to push forward quite soon. Daske, Dakaske uh, will pick through. There's a little bit of information. Will spam through, just delaying things as much as possible. And he now gets into sight, running out of time. Okay. And he will time finally get taken Attackers out. That's win. game number one being claimed by Alpha Kill here. <laughs> and what a game we have had from them. Alpha Q making it a 13-3 to claim the game number one of this semi-final number one. And they're going to be really happy with that performance going into that map on Fracture. And uh, let me just check uh, who picked up Fracture here. Uh, Fracture was uh, picked there by... Surya. I think, uh, yeah, Surya, right? Yeah. So it? I think uh, we're Team A band pulled. So yeah, uh, it was Alpha Q. Uh, map one was picked by Bind Surya. Yeah, Surya. Uh, yeah, yeah, Surya picked up Fracture here. So uh, right. we are going to. Be, uh, it's going to be an interesting one uh, on how they perform on their map pick. Uh, personally, that uh, Fracture has to be my second favorite map here. Uh, I think, uh, like I said, I haven't played a lot of Valorant, but uh, every time I have had uh, my two high skill games have been on Fracture. It's a, a very fun map to play. And the interesting part about Fracture is it's not a passive map right whether you're on defense or attack you need to play aggressive you need to play for map control and uh, even on defense we have seen these aggressive pushers coming out from different angles to try and take map control uh, but uh, talking a little bit about going back into this uh, game one on bind uh, what do you think the you know uh, the fall down for team surya was uh, well, I guess one of the main reasons for them was the fact that they didn't play default many rounds. They decided to maybe five stack towards one side. And uh, from the get-go, Alpha Q read into this play really well. They managed to come behind them, get a few easy picks, a few free picks, and then just dismiss or just TP out for safety. And that left uh, Team Surya on the back foot uh, on a lot of rounds quite early on. And combining that with the fact that they tended to dry peak a lot of angles, even though they had the utility to clear them, meant that they peaked a lot into Insane's Operator, and there was also a lot of free kills from the side of uh, Alpha Q. And uh, yeah, game believe... number yeah, game number one was uh, taken by uh, Alpha Q there uh, from uh, Lyceum. And uh, you were talking about the first picks, right? Even when you saw the first bloods on the side of Alpha Q, it te uh, tells a big story. Majority of the rounds they were playing at the advantage right. because the first pick was taken always by Alpha Q. There, there were very minimal rounds. I think the rounds that uh, Surya won was the rounds that they managed to get the initial pick uh, on their side. But the case mm -hmm. was that it was Alpha Q who was always getting first blood. So it was Surya always playing on the back foot going into these rounds because there was no trades happening for these uh, first bloods as well. And it was most of the time Alpha Q getting a free pick uh, to start things off. And already Surya was going into the round on the back foot. Uh, but having said that, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they do play on Fracture. I'm really hyped to see the, uh, the map. Uh, it's not a map that we see all the time, especially in... Uh, uh, in the pro scene in Sri Lanka, it's a map that is normally banned out. We don't see a lot of fracture. We do see the standard breeze ascent, uh, you know, bind icebox coming out, but we haven't seen a lot of, uh, you know, pearl and fracture being played. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, this next map going to be played on fracture. But having said that, uh, just before we do head into the game, for those of you who are joining from home, you're joining for the Interschool Esports Championship hosted by Royal College Colombo Computer Society, powered by none other than Lenovo. And of course, a shout out to our, all our other sponsors as well. We do have SLT Mobile joining us as well as the Royal College uh, Radio Club as well as the Photography Society as well as the Media Unit and also laptop, uh, Laptop.LK as the display partner as well. So a lot of sponsors coming on board to make sure that this event is a possibility. And a massive shout out to Game.LK, the esports partner as well. They have been the pioneers of esports uh, since uh, 2007, uh, making sure esports in the country goes forward day in and day out. And also now coming to the stage that, you know, uh, esports championship at a school level is actually a thing for the last couple of years. It's absolutely insane. I wish that it was there uh, during our school days, but it has come to that stage where uh, the, at a school level, people are already competitive and we can see the skill on uh, screen right now. But having said that, we'll be heading into a very short break. Do join us again for game number two of semi-final number one.
What makes a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology. We understand that we're better when we come together and that we're at our best when we champion each other's success. For decades, SLT Mobitel has been linking Sri Lankan lives, spearheading Sri Lanka's technological transformation and uniting the nation. Whatever the future may look like or wherever it may take us, we'll always be right here, connecting you to the things you care most about. SLT Mobitel, the connection. Take it anywhere with SLT Go. Data Bo One, Data Data Bo One. A non-stop journey with Data Bo One from SLT Mobitel Home Broadband. Hi guys, and we are back with game number two. What makes a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology. We understand that we're better when we come together, and that we're at our best when we champion each other. Hi guys and welcome back to Gear Up Interschool Esports Championship hosted by Royal College Colombo Computer Society and powered by Lenovo. You are joining us for game number two of the first semi-final in Byron. It is Lyceum College taking on Gateway College uh, Candy uh, in this uh, best of three matchup. And I think Lyceum came out on top. It was Alpha Q who took game number one and we are just about to head into game number two uh, on Fracture. Just before we do head into it, a massive shout out to all our sponsors here. SLT Mobitel, the first Fastest broadband connection in the country. If you all do not have a fiber line right now, you all need to get yourself one. Uh, all of this is a possibility thanks to SLT Mobile Fiber, uh, which is giving you absolutely amazing speed, allowing you to stream uh, as well as uh, play, uh, you know, all your games uh, at the lowest possible uh, pings as well. So. Uh, having said that, uh, shout out to the radio uh, radio club from Royal College as well as the Photography Society, as well as the media unit, and also Laptop.LK, our display partner, and a massive shout out to Game.LK, the esports partner as well, to make this all a possibility. And of course, a reminder, guys, uh, we do have the semifinals for Call of Duty Mobile happening tomorrow. I think it's starting at around 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon, and then we do have the grand finals in a LAN setting on the 8th of December. And that's going to be the, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the second LAN event uh, in this year and second LAN event in a very, very long time, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and hats off Royal College Computer Society for making it happen. And uh, having said that, uh, we are just uh, waiting on the players to uh, ready up. Uh, Kitty, let's go back into Fracture, right? Uh, uh, what are mm -hmm. we uh, looking in terms of agent selection? What are the predictions uh, that you have? Uh, well, from the side of Alpha Q, I mean, we did see uh, the Breach coming up, uh, even on Bind. And I think Breach is a really strong operator, uh, especially for a map like Fracture as well. And combining that with a raise, uh, I think might be the default duelist we see. And we did see a Brimstone coming in from Alpha Q alongside with an Astra. 
I believe from the side of uh, it was Surya. Mm -hmm. I think Brimstone might be the uh, better uh, controller for this map, or even a Wiper if that's what they decide to go with. Because the fact is you can have up to three smokes at a certain time, which is going to be much better for the attackers when it comes to uh, pushing into a site. Uh, chamber was the stable pick. Insane was quite good uh, on the chamber, so I think uh, both uh, teams might stick to a chamber. Uh, so yeah, in terms of the initial, I think we might see a fade as well. Fade is quite strong on a map like this. But hey, we will have to see what, uh, how things go. And of course, uh, the last map, I believe, uh, was chosen from Alpha Q, so they were quite strong on it. This is the pick coming in from uh, Team Surya. So we will have to see if they can turn the tides here or if the momentum of Alpha Q will continue and they will make it a 2-0 at the end of the first semifinals. It did, and uh, Fracture is a map that allows you to, you know, play around the compositions a little bit. We have seen uh, double controller lineups. We have seen double initiator lineups. Uh, going to be interesting to see what they do work with. Uh, you can run the breach and the fair together with a single controller and maybe a chamber and a dualist. Uh, we uh, have seen a lot of neons on uh, Fracture as well. It uh, kind of suits the map structure as well. It's a very aggressive map, whether you're on defense or attack. And it's uh, it's about taking space, right? Uh, whether you're on attack or defense, it's a, a lot about uh, taking space on this map. And Neon allows you to do that quite fast, uh, especially combined with a raise. I mean, sorry, a breach. And then a raise also technically allows you to do that, uh, especially with the pain shells being uh, coupled with the fault line and then uh, being able to satchel into sites with the blinds, to, uh, blinds from the breach as well. So there's a lot of ways that you can play this map. And that's going to be the interesting part about the second map uh, where teams will be uh, going to be interesting to see what the team competition is going to look like. And we did speak about this being a school level event. So a lot of these players uh, we haven't seen uh, in the pro scene in Sri Lanka. Some of them we have seen. We'll have to wait and see what composition. But when it comes to the pro scene, we would have an idea of what type of composition the majority of the teams run. Because we have right. seen them uh, over the years, you know, in multiple tournaments. So we have a vague idea of what they do run. But when it comes to a school format here, uh, with, uh, you know, all these uh, uh, school boys uh, taking part. Uh, it's uh, obviously going to be a surprise here as to what they are going to be running. Uh, we did even see uh, where they did run uh, the double duelist, which we haven't seen in a long time. Alpha Q was the team that ran the double duelist with the race and uh, the Brainer, uh, which has kind of fallen out of meta. Uh, but we did see them very successful with that on Bind. And with that, we are getting into the game. And like you said, we are going to be seeing that... Uh, uh, chamber come out uh, on the side, uh, at least on one side here, and then we do have the rays come out. So it's going to be the rays uh, chamber combination on either side. Uh, they are hovering over the wiper. They do pick up the wiper and the fade as well. What is logic going to play? Is it going to be on a controller or is it going to be on a, a initiator? Is going to be the question. And the breach rays combination coming out from uh, Alpha Q here. Uh, again, stick into that uh, combination. Russell, what is he going to pick up? Is he going to go for that dualist? And yes, so they are playing that double dualist yet again. Oh, hovering over the Yoru. Mm. Double dualist from either side. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what's uh, interesting for me is the fact that we have uh, the wiper. So, I mean, normally we do see the wiper, but then we see him probably complemented by something like uh, either Nastra or Primstone. But uh, this time, Team uh, Surya decides to go with just the wiper, which is something we've seen. Uh, prior, but before, since I mean, since it's only going to be a, a one control setup, it, it might be good for maybe a B attack, but it, it, it becomes a bit more harder when it comes to the A side push. Uh, from the side of Alpha Q, we something uh, a bit more conventional. We have the breach, we have the brimstone, we have the chamber, but uh, it's going to be uh, two duelists from the side of Alpha Q uh, this match as well, which is something which worked for them last time around. So maybe the momentum will carry, but this time it's going to be insane who's playing the raise and it's going to be. Uh, Mr. Patatas on the chamber. So they did switch roles for this map, but it's still the same agents uh, throughout the game. But the side of Team Surya is a bit more interesting. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, the Viper. So it's it's we'll have to see how it works into their playstyle, but they will be starting off on the defense. So yeah, let's just see how it works out for them. Yeah, and uh, we did see them run the double sentinel last time around. This time they have uh, uh, opted for the double duelist lineup on both sides. Again, like I said, it's not something that you see. I, I don't really agree with uh, the Alpha Q Reina pick there and even uh, Team Surya's Reina pick. Uh, you can couple that up with another initiator or even uh, in terms of Team Surya, I think Viper with another controller and then on uh, Alpha Q maybe with another initiator, I think would have been really nice to see. 
but uh, they have uh, been successful with this on the side of alpha q so they are uh, sticking to what is uh, tried and true here and what they are comfortable with uh, even though they have switched up between uh, the rays and uh, the uh, chamber players uh, let's have a look at what they are going to be doing again right uh, it's going to be a well, yep. five man push coming out from Alpha. But I also feel the fact that, you know, the breach will actually complement these two duelists because both Russell and Insane like to be quite aggressive from the get go. And as we can see, it's going to be a five man rush coming in. Uh, three plays from Sans, two plays from A main to quickly get control. Russell already inside. It's going to be the raise from the defending team, the first person to come in contact. And Kane will be the first to take down Shucky. Yeah, and there's already advantage again. The first blood going in favor of Alpha Q. It's going to be a big fight. Take Russell finds one, gets the. Overheal of uh, Marco. Nice. I don't do it and Marco. Oh, Russell is going to be reload here. But finally, Russell will pick him up, leaving uh, just the Rena logic in a 1v4 and an impossible uh, retake here. Yeah, for really aggressive first round coming in from the side of Afro Q and not many uh, utility, not much utility rather in the hands of the team. So we actually hold back such an aggressive push. And yeah, the first round in the hands of Alpha Q. Yeah, and uh, Patatas there uh, again with a lovely headhunter shot there onto, uh, who was it, I think Logic there? Logic. And yeah, and uh, the funny part about that was he actually readjusted because he popped down from above uh, and took that shot. So a really good shot coming out from him uh, to take that final pick. And again, the coordination on the side of Team Surya seems to be a little bit off. Even on the retake, they, they went mine. one by one. Yes, Chucky was caught inside the side, but the rest of them just kind of uh, barreled into the side one by one and just paid the price for it. Oh, they are going to be on save, but this is the buy round coming out from Team Alpha Kill. Yeah, an aggressive push for work for them on the first round, and uh, they are looking to repeat it this round as well. Chamber. Unfortunate yeah. timing. He tries to get one pick, but of course, Russell is only six this team and he's with the six. Fine, Russell. Here manages to shoot this one out. One enemy remaining. Well, get the fourth. Looking for the S here. Why is Logic going to be? Is the question. Logic is rotating all the way around here. Uh, he's going to be coming through drop here from this. They're looking Russell for him and they're trying to get Russell there yes. on the side of the defenders. I mean, the sand push, they have nothing to do about it. The chamber just keeping back and unfortunately Russell has oh, already found him and there we go. They find Logic, Russell trying to get his ace and Logic is aware of this and he decides to run back. Uh, they might actually end up doing the ace here. Logic will get spotted out. This might be the first ace there. Everyone's trying to kill Russell. Uh, and Russell will find the first ace of the tournament here. And Ranged. what a performance he has had on this uh, match number one and then on match number two also off to a very, uh, flying start here already seven kills under his belt uh, at the end of two rounds. Indeed, a well-deserved ace coming in there from Russell and a really a good team coordination from Alpha Q to both win the round and also to give that ace to him. Uh, really good coordination all the way around. But of course, this is going to be the first fire round coming in from the, si the side of Team Surya. They do have there. Uh, the better guns there. heading on into round number three, and it's going to be towards a B side this time. Unfortunately, only two players are ready to deal with this, so let's see how it works out for them. The to uh, get some control on the long there. Uh, be main rather, and then uh, Macro will find Patata on entry there. Insane, needs to be careful, will find the kill on the logic, I am not sure how he will found that uh, macro with the trade on to Tarkaski. It's uh, so a 3-4 now on the defense, so they've done advantage, working out well for them. Lin, uh, with the Spectre, will go for the plants here now. And Mino, Russell, Russell. 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 again, this man is going absolute hand, he has recovered the Phantom as well, leaving them to the one enemy remaining. Find one. Russell finds another, that's his third kill on the round, looking for the fourth as well. Uh, the chamber left in a one v two will get uh, caught out by insane, and they will win the bonus as well. Alpha Q bringing in the momentum from that game number one. It's three zero going into the fourth round. Absolutely, I actually thought that maybe Team Surya might win that round because Macro he was doing quite decent. He managed to hold the attackers at bay, uh, getting two kills there, doing decent damage on breach as well. But in the end, Russell there with the Spectre and the Empress. Uh, managing to run rings around them and uh, the scoreline is 3-0 and look at this Russell already 10-0 uh, with only three rounds into the game doing amazing for his team yeah I mean his KD is off the chart right now uh, it's at a three right now with uh, three plus right now after they got three out and then they are not blind to make sure they are stalling in this time being playing the layers out there it's very aggressive just coming out meanwhile the shots will whiff they will see him out Macro will get the trade there but 
uh, will get trained One by enemy the Pataras, maybe the last man alive. Pataras finds the second kill on the Chucky Spike as well. Planted. And Chamber with a headhunter, one bullet left on it as well. The Marshal work out. Oh, just staying there. Nice shot, man. The scope, but will get cleaned out by Pataras and makes it a 4-0. Uh, Alpha kill. So aggressive, they will make mistakes. and uh, they are when making they this work. And this is uh, what I spoke about the map. It's a very aggressive map, and they're That's making it worse. Part. I feel like Team Surya might have to, you know, gamble a side here, try to fight like a certain side, hope that Alpha can push it, and then try to get the kills there. But the question is, yeah, it looks like so. There's four players stacked towards A. There's one player inside B. So they're hoping that it might be once again an A push, and they are hoping to gamble on it. It's hopefully it works for them, but no. Uh, once again, it's going to be uh, macro going back towards B as well. Starting to play default so far. The lead does get the by the Oh my god, Chamber finds both of them. Just beat the pressure that you needed. And meanwhile, now the Marshall is going to be used by the bridge. Instead, finds Chucky inside the side. It's going to be a 3v3 now. Again, meanwhile, finds One macro. enemy remaining. But Russell and Insane to clean things up and these rounds are falling apart so so fast uh, but uh, this is the aggression that was needed from the defense and this is the first time we did see the first blood going in favor of uh, Team Surya and this is what they need to do in every round right they need to grab position here it's just unfortunate that Breach had the ultimate this round but if not it would have worked out for them uh, I mean I, I feel like it would have at least worked out for them I think Chucky would have been able to at least get one pick uh, if he was not called uh, in the Rolling Thunder from uh, Breach Right. Mm -hmm. And also the thing is, uh, you'd either, you know, stack a side or you actually play retake. But so far, Team Suru are kind of playing in between. Which means that when the initial pick, uh, the attack comes in, at least one player dies. But then when it comes to retake, uh, you don't have enough players left alive, right? So it's like, uh, playing with retake. And unfortunately, it's going to be insane once again. They can change the game. But of course, gets first to the Russell. And a macro inside the first pit is good to one kill, but Dikowski will take down my play in the meantime. Last player's going to be too good. The bridge in a 1v3 down to no HP, finds one on the macro, that's the wipe of spit down and Chucky will clean him out and that's a thrifty being won by Team Surya. I mean, again the change up from strategies from Alpha Q, it almost worked out for them. Uh, but uh, Team Surya managing to hold strong there this time around. Uh, they did push as a 3 on B long, didn't really find anyone, but they did have 3 uh, people inside completing the Viper Spit as well there to hold off uh, everyone. And Chamber managing to find uh, Russell there at the start as a first pick was absolutely huge. Really, yeah, the Viper Spit coming from Macro there was, a, it was enough for them to win you that round. To play, let's and, uh, play. Looking a bit of a more default push coming in from the side of the computer this time around. And they have been changing up strategies quite a bit from round to round, uh, keeping. Uh, guessing here. Meanwhile, first pick going to be taken by Insane onto Hyper. A one tap coming out of onto him, and the plant will be taken here in B side for absolutely free. And now the rotate coming out. Uh, it is just uh, just the Rainer rotating in for the time being. Uh, Logic will get snapped. That's a massive kill to have. So 4 4 now for the retake. Patatas, though, will find the chamber with that uh, kill force. Like 3 4 4. Kankas there to delay the push. Macro will get spotted there. Logic will get taken down. One enemy Patatas remaining. Finds the second insane with the kill onto Macro there, leaving the fade in an almost impossible 1 v 4 retake here. Uh, the timer running out and looking to save the weapon here. Then Saki whips completely and insane is able to turn around and get that kill and the is not going to die to the bomb going off there. It's 6-1. Uh, th that makes it the scoreline 6-1 and the thing is it's this change of pace coming in from Alpha, Alpha Q which keeps uh, seems very guessing because uh, they've conditioned the side of Surya to expect a rush like 24-7. They've been rushing the past five rounds and it's worked out for them quite well and then when they just throw a curveball when they try to play it around default they play really really slow uh surya is not expecting that and that's how insane was able to capitalize on it for the first pick uh the one tap onto the rays who was not expecting it so yeah it's this change of pace which uh, alpha q are able to do which makes it uh, a really which makes them rather a really potent team which uh surya is finding it quite hard to deal with and the scoreline uh 
says that quite well. It is 6-1, and I believe we are heading into a technical pause uh, until uh, the game gets sorted out. So we do have a few minutes to actually reflect uh, on what we've seen so far. So, Tara, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, indeed. I, I think it goes back to what Alpha Q has been doing, right? Uh, they have been changing up pace. They did this on Bind as well. And uh, in fact, I think it's going to be the change the pace in the second round. But you know, you're back with the game, and now, oh my good god, he manages to miss this out in time. Uh, George Yatta shows the link of the game out, and Rasa manages to find the second kill as well. Finds the third as well. He's going absolutely ham with his efforts. Looking for the last two here. Might be another ace if you can manage to close this out. Uh, looking for Matt Jones, right here, the leader, and they push forward, and he's on another hit yet again. Looking for the last man alive, he's going to be in. Uh, uh, sorry, he's going to be in this year. They do have an idea because he did manage to get one pick by Paul. This down, and that's Russell picking up another hit with that Empress online, and Russell firing on absolutely all cylinders here. Good God, this man. Yes, indeed, that is a second ace for him this match, uh, rather this map, and he's wrecking havoc, look at the scoreline, it is 17-3 for him, uh, with only 8 rounds into the game, doing amazing stuff here, and uh, yeah, Alpha Q, looking to run away with this game. Yeah, again, keeping that uh, almost uh, 3 KD alive for Russell here, 17 kills, and uh, we were looking at new talent uh, in terms of, you know, gunplay as well as uh, game, game stuff like that, and this team from Alpha Q and play that is what they have. Insane in the meantime will find logic that's the oh, that's the first blood going to rock them and now the rolling thunder will be used as well in the new time they have pushed all the way from uh from drop there and uh, uh Russell will find the second kill as well so you know really has to get the trade on to then Russell finds another using that dismiss and meanwhile finally we get put down the operator in the hands of Patas and we will have the final skill falling and another very quick round a change of pace yet again from alpha q uh will find that round it's 8-1 now uh going into this uh, 10th round of uh the first half but uh, i mean uh the gameplay coming out from alpha q has just uh, been uh, too good here and uh, mm -hmm. team surya has not been able to find nansa and yet again they are on multiple guardians here and I don't Together. think, I, I think I would prefer them on Spectres rather than Guardians at this point with the pace that uh, Alpha Q yeah. is playing. Again, a five man rush coming into A side. He's going to be the only one. He's going to get thrown off the back. Oh, it's a front line. And now the showstopper will get popped as well. He's going to be able to find him. He's going to be trying to hold off. Uh, Sands, that Logic will find one on Russell. A massive kill to have. Insane with the showstopper. Not going to be able to find anything, but Logic will get taken down. Patatras in the meantime will find one enemy the remaining. Operator. Everything falling apart. Insane finds Hyper as well. The Viper, uh, one, two, three, finds one. Finds the second as well. Macro uh, looking to try and trust it, but he's down to 39 HP in this 1v2. McCain uh, holding off uh, Sands there for the time being and will uh, run it back. Switch out weapons. He needs to reload. Patata is going to be great to find the kill on the macro and will make it a 9-1. That's indeed the... I mean, I, I know we say that, you know, Russell is doing really well, but of course we need to, uh, you know, commend the entire team because Russell is playing off utility, the perfect utility coming off from both Insane and Patatas and, you know, Canes. The breach stun, the smokes, everything is just pitch perfect and everything is just precisely on point for the entire team, and especially Russell, uh, to capitalize and uh, the entire team. It's looking quite dominant at the moment, and the scoreline 9-1 is a, 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 a reflection of that. Indeed, and uh, with that, they are going for another aggressive push on each of these sides here. They uh, might even push through the Viper Smooth. No, they don't. They will back off, so again, a change of pace, but meanwhile, Chamber has got off a little bit of motion here. We will fight one with it. I don't be able to find anything. Russell will clean him up, and that's the first pick uh, going into Alpha Team. Yet again, now two and insane uh, will find logic as well the fast aggression coming out they have no answer so they will find it out and meanwhile they will find that one kill on Russell they will the frenzy and instead will get the trade on to Chucky Macro finds another on, uh, and Hyper will find the Kuski here making it a 2v2 the refranks do come in and Patatas is quite low it's going to be a 2v2 in this retake situation but if one enemy comes in and Patatas with the open hand will take down Hyper leaving the Wiper, Macro in a 1v2. He does have the Wiper's bit to work with if he just That's managed to ready. get in his side, but no. Don't get in my way. 
Time being and McCain through the smoke will find that kill on to macro. Good prediction Last coming round out. Before the and, switch. Uh, I really want to talk about what you said, right? I'm it's just generous. not Russell who is who fighting out. It's just the utility coming out from Alpha Q has been uh, absolutely picture perfect. It allows uh, Reyna play, especially uh, the ability to, you know, overheal or dismiss out. Uh, it allows a good Reyna player to be, uh, you know, just unstoppable when, when your team is just uh, so in sync uh, with the utility usage and he's just capitalizing off it. And the scoreline reads it like 21 kills. And uh, the uh, the Kaski with the 11 assists coming in for him as well. Uh, just the team mentality of Alpha Q doing really well. It's 10 man going to the last round before we have logic. And push us forward. I have to be able to but insane will find that kill on logic through that blind even. And that's supposed to be yet again going to turn around here. Uh, it's in two and he's trying to match the pace, but not really working out. And there's going to be five players inside as we head on into the first plant situation. And they have Degaski trying to get the kill there onto Hyper, but he switches to the shorty there. Will he aggress here? That is a question. But no, he decides to use the money instead of come behind Chucky and get two kills. Last player standing. Those are going to be there. And going to be stuck in a 1v3. The rolling time is going to be less than going to be the final round. Trying to go in for a tie. Uh, got a bit too risky and the kill will be up. Making it 11 yeah. one half and Alpha Q just Switching absolutely side. dominant. To these here. arms for a spin. Yes, indeed, and that is an 11 one half in favor of Alpha Q. As we head on into the second half, I believe uh, we have a few minutes to talk about what just happened. I mean, what exactly did just happen? It, it happened so fast uh, from the side of Alpha Q. Uh, absolutely amazing performance. And this is again uh, the differentiation, right? Like, uh, when it comes to Baron, especially, uh, you know, when you're climbing up through the ranks, what I've seen is I, I obviously started at the bottom and I started very late uh, when uh, Warren was already, you know, booming in Sri Lanka. That's when I started playing Warren. And what I saw from uh, going up from, you know, iron to silver to, uh, you know, bronze to silver to gold and then platinum uh, where I'm at right now. Uh, what I saw was the differentiation. It comes from, you know, when you go from gold to plat and then uh, plat also when you, you know, go into plat three, uh, we see the differentiation where the communication and the team sync is needed to be able to, you know, go far. But when it, when it comes to the, just the gunplay, right, there isn't a lot of, lot difference when it comes to you know uh, from gold to plat or you know even silver to gold there isn't a big difference in terms of gunplay uh, everyone does have the aim it's just that you know you're a little bit better at picking with your utility you're a lot better uh, using your utility to be able to take a fight what happens at the right. lower ranks is you're not as great as using your utility you tend to dry pick a lot and you depend completely on your you know uh, one we ones or your just your aim which is not what Valorant is all about we uh, Valorant is a game that has a lot of utility in it and a lot of team synergy is required to pull it off and that's what we are seeing from Alpha Q here I think all of those five players are really good at fragging out I think all 10 players here are able to frag out it's just an Alpha Q the utility usage has been absolutely insane and uh, the guy with the aim here, Russell, uh, his gunplay has been impeccable and he's able to capitalize on this so much just because his team is so much in sync and he's able to use his utility so well. And that's why that's another reason why they are so fast on entry. They are so fast in taking the sides. And uh, Team Surya is falling behind in terms of playing off of each other. They're not playing for these uh, trades that you're looking for. You know, you want to do these one-two picks where you have one player picking out. And if he does go down, you have the second one immediately picking up behind him to get the trade off, which is not happening. And Fracture is mm -hmm. a map, I think, when we started the ma uh, map out also, I said you need to be aggressive and you need to have those uh, players playing together. You have to have the utility on point. Uh, we do have uh, the ability you use this as well you have the fade uh, with the reds combination uh, you do have a lot of uh, combinations that they can use you can use the viper mollies to you know throw people off angles and push push a area as well and gain some map control which i haven't seen from team surya they're always in this site you know playing the angles fracture is not about that you can't hold a site uh, because it's almost impossible to retake on fracture and you need to be able to as, uh, get as much as you can on defense on entry but the problem is on entry if you're being rushed in by five players with the utility that uh, team alpha q has team surya needs to be aggressive here they cannot afford to play passive and to be uh, you know be able to take around uh, as well and uh, from what i heard there is a small three minute break between uh, the 
the halves. So we will have to wait a little while before we do get into that second half. But uh, good God, uh, Steam Surya has their work cut out here. A level one deficit to come back from that. Not that we have not seen it. We have seen it mm-hmm. at a professional level in Sri Lanka as well. We have, you know, we have had a 12-0 deficit being turned around or at least uh, going 39 at the end of the game uh, uh, after being, uh, you know, 12-0 down. We have seen it. Uh, but whether uh, uh, Team Surya can uh, pull that off against the very in sync uh, 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 squad from uh, Alpha Q is going to be the question. But what, what a performance, uh, Kitty. Uh, it's just uh, absolutely a pleasure to watch uh, this uh, side from Alpha Q perform. Yes, indeed. So can Team Surya beat the aggression coming in from Alpha Q is the question as we head on into the second half. But I believe, as you said, Tara, we do have a small break. So uh, we will meet you at the other side of it. So until then, yep, let's head on into a small break. With the internet is powered by fiber, it's nothing like those days. Connections without delays or interruptions, quite unlike those days. The pinnacle of picture quality, an ultra-fast superpower. It's nothing quite like those days. Sri Lanka's first, fastest and widest premium fiber network. SLT Mobitel Fiber, the fiber of the nation. Take it everywhere with SLT Go. Data Bo One, Data Data Bo One. A non-stop journey with Data Bo One from SLT Mobitel Home Broadband. What makes a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology. We understand that we're better when we come together and that we're at our best when we champion each other's success. For decades, SLT Mobitel has been linking Sri Lankan lives spearheading Sri Lanka's technological transformation and uniting the nation. Whatever the future may look like, or wherever it may take us, we'll always be right here, connecting you to the things you care most about. SLT Mobitel, the connection. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gear Up, the Inter-School Esports Championship uh, hosted by Royal College Colombo Computer Society and, of course, powered by Lenovo. We are just uh, halfway down map number two of the semi-final number one in Darwin. It is Gateway College Kent taking on Lyceum College. Uh, and we, we will uh, be going into a very rough half for Team Surya to come back into. It's 11-1, the uh, first part of it. Uh, first pistol yeah. round, and it is going to be a five man push coming out. The wiper wall goes up, will cover off most of that A side, and they will take. Uh, haven't really got into sight here. The paint shells will try to throw incense off. Incense still holding the corner. Coming in fast enough. Logic and Chunky both, though, finding Ken and insane. Really good start for Team Surya here, and they will get the down. Now it's a they will find one, but Russell again 
going out the little links and finds a uh, hyper as well as macro there making it a two last player standing we're going to the side chucky will find Takashi as uh leaving russell in a one we we here not going to find any oh he does find chucky though looking for more they need to be careful though last player standing and russell finds another can he going to be able to ace this yet again he's going to uh, stick it halfway down we have the drop he's going to be halfing it and he does find the kill for God, this man. Hey. Now, mind you, this time he did not have Bow any help. Me. He just went in. He just destroyed. Russell finds the third ace. Match My point. good lord. Stamp out there. Now, when, just gives, when you yeah. think Team Sura is having a break and actually, you know, turning things around, yeah. enter Russell and just absolutely demolishes the entire team. He already has his ult. And as we head on into what could possibly be uh, the last round of the game. Indeed, and now we do have a force coming out from Team Surya, obviously. And uh, we have Russell on a vandal uh, with, with the, the Empress. Empress. Look, yeah, with the Empress. So he switches into a Phantom. I think the Phantom might be a little bit better with the Empress online. Uh, it just allows you a little bit more uh, spray control. Uh, but having said that, uh, a slower push coming out from uh, the side of Team Surya, looking to gain position here. We have a default logic is going to be lurking uh, with the rest of the team uh, going to be uh, heading into that A site. And it's still a very slow uh, push coming out. And logic will give away its push. And meanwhile, the Emperor is going to get popped by Russell there on this side. They still haven't been able to get inside though. And Saki will and it's fine instant with the smoke. Russell spamming away with that Phantom and the Emperor's pop the will do quite a bit of damage. Uh, Dakashki meanwhile finds logic uh, all the way. Uh, where was it actually? All the way who was lurking through. Uh, that was in, yep, in canteen inside B. Yeah. Molly. And uh, Molly is going to do things uh, by Dakashki uh, for the time being on that entry. But uh, the entire attack is going to be coming in from. What's this area called? I, I'm, I'm forgetting the name now. Uh, from the top. Uh, I mean, yeah. A side drop. Yeah, A side and, drop. Uh, now, yeah. Yep, a good timing there because uh, it was uh, Russell who had the Empress online, so just <gasps> waiting it off. And oh. Chamber gets spotted by the Kaski. And 30 his seconds life left. will get removed from the board as well. With 30 seconds left, as the Caster says, oh. uh, we've got Hyper. Go for a kill on Russell. It's going to be 3v3, but mind you, Hyper is quite low as they head on. This A side has one enemy. We'll be inside the one. Go for one second. Find another. The Defenders win. will clean things up. It's going to be 13 1. A statement by Alpha as they head on to the Grand Finals. Yeah, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's your first Grand Finals Alpha Q. What a do dominant performance from them. Absolutely insane. And this is a team to watch out for, for any team who is going to be coming out from the other side of uh, semi-final number two. It is going to be uh, Wesley College Colombo taking on Isipatana College Colombo. And uh, this is definitely a team to look out for. And this man, Russell, uh, 26 kills on his, under his belt, but it's just not him. Yes, the scoreline reads that he has 26, but insane helping him out with 16 kills and the rest of the team also the utility use, utilization from uh this team the team synergy coming out from alpha q has been absolutely insane and again the uh, first bloods uh, kind of tells you the story of why alpha q has been so dominant it is almost always uh them who are getting uh the first bloods are uh, going into these rounds and they capitalize uh, on it so much and the aggression from this team uh, has been uh, absolutely insane whether it was on bind or fracture and of course this is going to be a, give a little bit of an idea to the team that is going to be facing off against them in the grand final they have a little bit of more time to prepare uh they do have until Thursday, which is the 8th of December, to prepare for this grand final. So they are going to be able to read into what uh, Alpha Q has been doing. So obviously, the team that wins in the second semi finals is going to be doing their studies on this team uh, going into that grand final, which is going to be another best of three. But uh, it, it is a little, a little bit disappointing that uh, this uh, semi final ended in a 2 0. Obviously, Alpha Q is uh, very happy, but we as casters, we would obviously like it to go the distance uh, where we do see that, you know, uh, three game series. But uh, it was not to be today at least in semi-final number one but we do have semi-final number two uh, but also uh just before we do head out uh into a break a massive shout out to royal college Columbus computer society for organizing this tournament gear up uh the inter-school uh esports championship which is absolutely insane we do have another title not just baron we do have call of duty mobile happening tomorrow the semi-finals for that tomorrow and then of, of course the grand finals on the uh, 8th of december as well so 
a lot of action packed gaming coming your way thanks to Royal College Colombo uh, Computer Society and also to the partners joined up with them uh, especially Lenovo powering the entire event if you all do not, do not have a Lenovo laptop or if you're in the market to buy a laptop I can recommend this without fear because I myself I'm a huge fan of uh, Lenovo as a brand uh, I can attest to its durability since I used mine for like seven years running and Indian when I got rid of it it was not because it was broken it was just that I was going in for a higher uh, spec uh, desktop at the time because at the end of seven years you're looking at a very old laptop so I, I wanted to get a desktop for my streaming setup and all of that and that's the only reason that I switched out from my Lenovo laptop so it survived me for seven years running and it has been absolutely insane uh, so if you're in the market uh, for a new laptop their new gaming series the Legion series if I'm not mistaken it looks absolutely insane you would have seen during the advertisements as well uh, they are absolutely insane do check it out if you're in the market for a new laptop a shout out to Gamerad LK as well the esports partner uh, with uh, joining up with uh, Royal College Column Computer Society to make this event a possibility as well as our, all our other partners SL Team Mobital as well as Royal College Media Unit the Photography uh, Society as well as the Radio uh, Society as well and also Laptop.LK for joining up uh, to make this event a possibility but having said that do join us again in around 20 minutes we do have semi-final number two happening it's going to be Wesley College Colombo taking on Isipatana College Colombo we'll be right back after this break you yeah. a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology. We understand that we're better when we come together, and that we're at our best when we champion each other's success. For decades, SLT Morbidil has been linking Sri Lankan lives spearheading Sri Lanka's technological transformation and uniting the nation. Whatever the future may look like or wherever it may take us, we'll always be right here, connecting you to the things you care most about. SLT Mobitel, the connection.
A non-stop journey with Data Bowen from SLT Mobitel Home Broadband. This is why we play. Gaming is something more. It's a community made vibrant and real by AI. Technology helps us to be part of something bigger. Games play as if they were real life. Are you with me now? Said, are you with me now? Ain't felt this good in a while. They want us to simmer down. Can you hear me now? Am I going in and now? I stop and just look around to see if you're with me now. This is why we play a community. Thousands of communities. Tell me, are you with me now? Ready to put it down. Start at the bottom already. Nothing can hold you back. So, 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 why do you play? When the internet is powered by fiber, it's nothing like those days. Connections without delays or interruptions. Quite unlike those days. The pinnacle of picture quality. An ultra fast superpower. It's nothing quite like those days. Sri Lanka's first, fastest, and widest premium fiber network. SOT Mobitel Fiber. The fiber of the nation.
non-stop journey with Data Bowen from SLT Mobitel Home Broadband. What makes a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology, we understand that we're better when we come together and that we're at our best when we champion each other's success. For decades, SLT Mobitel has been linking Sri Lankan lives spearheading Sri Lanka's technological transformation and uniting the nation. Whatever the future may look like, or wherever it may take us, we'll always be right here, connecting you to the things you care most about. SLT Mobitel, the connection. Stop journey with Data Bowen from SLT Mobitel Home Broadband.
This is why we play. Gaming is something more. It's a community made vibrant and real by AI. Technology helps us to be part of something bigger. Games play as if they were real life. Are you with me now? Said, are you with me now? Ain't felt this good in a while. They want us to simmer down. Can you hear me now? Am I going in and out? I stop and just look around to see if you're with me now. This is why we play a community. Thousands of communities. Tell me, are you with me now? Ready to get there. Start at the bottom, already forgot it, but then won't forgive me now. You really get ready now. You hate it, you see me cry. Nothing can hold you back. So, 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 why do you play? When the internet is powered by fiber, it's nothing like those days. Connections without delays or interruptions. Quite unlike those days. The pinnacle of picture quality. An ultra-fast superpower. It's nothing quite like those days. Sri Lanka's first, fastest and widest premium fiber network. SLT Mobitel Fiber. The fiber of the nation. journey with Data Bowen from SLT Mobitel Home Broadband. Number two 
title here. So for those of you who do not know, we have two titles. Uh, we do have uh, Call of Duty Mobile happening tomorrow, the semifinals for that, and then the LAN event on the 8th of December at Royal College, which is going to be uh, absolutely insane as well. It's going to be the second LAN event, if I'm not mistaken, for the year. And also, just before we do get into semifinal number uh, number two here, Cloud Six taking on Team Phoenix. Uh, a shout out to our sponsors. We do have our esports partner, Game Dot LK, who has been the pioneers of esports in the country for uh, since uh, 2007, 2008. And uh, we have a sponsor. We have SRT Mobile joining hands, the fastest broadband connection in the country. Get this. Going to be the pick of Cloud Six. So, I mean, the pick is so firstly going to be the bands. Uh, the first band coming from Cloud Six uh, was Icebox. The second band from Team Phoenix was Fracture, which is the map which we saw uh, in the last semis. Which means the first pick coming in from the side of Cloud Six will be Ascent. It's going to be a first for us today, and the starting off on the defense, it will be uh, Team Phoenix. Map number two will be Haven, which is a pick from uh, Team Phoenix, and uh, defense will be starting off uh, with Cloud Six. So that means the side of us uh, will be uh, map number three, which is Bind, which is the first map which we saw today. And once again, the Bind side it will be Cloud Six. So if it goes all the way, we'll be going back to Bind, which is the map which we saw the map today. But the map number one and two is going to be for us for today. It will be a side of Haven. So let's see how this goes.
ter- in, uh, in terms of being competitive i don't think uh, it's uh, uh, uh yeah so i guess it would have to depend on which uh, way that they uh, decide to play because as you said ascent is a really flexible map and you can actually have a lot of competition it's not something like bind where you expect there to be a certain pick of like certain stable agents when you say when it comes to not playing ascent you have a lot of different picks you can have ko you can even have sage because i remember uh, i believe it was the cloud nine uh, I mean, it was the optic cloud game or the prx prx game where we did have a sage and he was doing really well to cover off uh, was kind of and wasting a lot of time, so it, it's a really good way. So it's a you good take that. We see as I'm playing this, it might be a side play, it might be a kill zone, it might be a sage. So there's a lot of stuff that you've got to do as well. That's just so fun. I believe it was uh, three initiators and zero side play. So a sofa, a play, and a clear. And I'm not sure if it's going to be a sage, but it's a sage. So 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 uh phoenix uh, team phoenix 6 uh, sorry team phoenix on the defense and then cloud 6 on the attack uh, to start things off um yes and yeah um i said yeah phoenix on the defense and uh, cloud 6 on the attack uh, apologies there's a bit of change in the names i i assume it will get fixed in a bit uh, but so far let's look at how the uh, agent picks will happen so though we we can see oxy is already hovering over uh, the sage so we might be seeing a sage coming in from one side Uh yeah by the looks of it uh, we might see a sage here the KO as well uh, brimstone and ravan ascent a uh, brimstone overall i think it's just a really good controller after they did make the changes where you know the smokes drop instantly and uh, the stim beacon also uh, it just allows you to you know rush into sight uh, the extra fire it obviously helps and then uh, the orbital strike and molly especially if you do have lineups and there's quite a bit of lineups on all of these maps and we have seen uh, teams uh, abuse it uh, quite a bit and uh, we will have to wait and see how they do uh, you know bring it together choose your agent and uh, make it work uh, i actually forgot about the breach right we do have a breach coming out uh, here i really love breach especially on ascent as well as split when it used to be there uh, just uh, a lot of angles that you can use this uh, breach with uh, especially when you uh, whether you're on defense or uh, whether you're on attack you can play very aggressive with this uh, agent uh we have only one soa coming out so soa versus a fade on either side mm mm-hmm. yeah so it's going to be interesting to see how this works because as you can see it's uh, completely different you don't have i i believe yeah they don't have any similar agents whatsoever so it's going to be uh, an omen versus a brimstone a jet versus a rainer a fade versus a sova and then a ko versus uh, a breach yeah and chamber sage uh, difference chamber sage. Well, so, mm-hmm. yeah uh the only thing here is uh, for them is uh, they don't have Uh, on the side of team phoenix they don't have uh, an operator player uh, uh which right. is mm-hmm. kind of kind of weird because you you would think that any composition would have one agent that can run the operator and then on the other side when we go to cloud 6 we have two uh, agents who can run the operator very effectively we have the jet and the chamber both who are very good operator agents and
uh, yes, better with, uh, in terms of being able to round the world, and in terms mm-hmm. of the fact that you can always buy out an off if you lose out that round, and when you lose the round. Lost your operator and put sure, sure. operator uh, in your hands to contest that operator, and uh, that's something that I, uh, you know, really love about uh, playing chamber because you can always uh, risk-free bring out the operator. And the uh, uh, so, uh, what are the reasons why you set a stage? Uh, majority of these matches. Good to see uh, teams still uh, playing chess. Yeah, I mean, we have seen some crazy chess players, especially on a map like uh, Haven, because, I mean, Ascent, because you do have those up left angles. You have uh, a Rafters in A, you have uh, behind the walls in B. So there's a, a lot of good up left angles and even good dash spots you can get into as a jet. We've seen Buzz uh, be really good at it, so we'll just have to see if uh, these two teams can uh, play up to those levels. But uh, as we start, it's going to be Team Phoenix on the defense, and it's going to be Cloud6 on the attack, as we said. 10 entirely different agents, so we'll have to see uh, how these two teams play with it. So far, to start things off, Cloud6 uh, looking towards uh, an A push. Indeed, uh, and it is uh, going not going to be a default, so they are looking to barrel down one side. Again, something that I don't like uh, in this matchups is that they are not playing for map control, which is kind of iffy. Meanwhile, one gets spotted out, all the game, uh, maybe a Guam is boxing out. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, no real damage or pitch being taken here to Cloud6. Recon dot to a side and they're going to be rushing into a double inch head lineup. They will find one kill on to uh Smurf there on the arena. So that's just been falling. Uh flashing out, but Burami finds the next head girl team is already in trouble here. Uh in at 3 v 5 they will get the plant down. Uh Burami gets a third as well. One enemy uh, remaining. Four, and a deep uh forty uh forty uh we find uh we find so at last man in live and that's a flawless coming out from the side of Cloud6 to take the first pitch around. And, and you know what, sorry, I think uh, I think I've probably seen uh, four people I've played before. I think uh, um, that name is a bit familiar for me. Mm-hmm. So maybe, just maybe, we've seen him play before. Yeah. Like I said, some of these uh, school players do play in the professional scene already. I mean, uh, we spoke about this where we have. Uh, these youngsters uh, play at a professional level already, so we might have seen one of these two, uh, one of these two players uh, uh, already in a professional scene, uh, and uh, they might have been using you know a different IGN at the time. Uh, shot in the hands, the Brimstone gets walled off. He's looking for that uh, first pick here, but maybe a rush there. It's that big control. We have a Marshall in the hand. One of these players uh, was looking at. Uh, uh, Standing ahead. I think to make it a cut one push. The recon is good to spot two right players. Here. Gaz will take gun on dead. It's going to be the KO left alone to fight off four players. The Beach Sun comes in to try and accompany him, but with the drone going in, uh, the jet should be able to dash into the side quite safely, and it's going to be a free site for them uh, as they rush into A. It's going to be a 5v4 on this retake. The spike will go down, and the Zona, spike good to one. No, he misses his shots, but Gaz will take down the rear. And we got Burami gets right a headshot with the Marshal and they will clean it up. There's a Vandal picked up by Eddie as well um, uh, on the second round. But it was a bit of a force coming out from uh, the side of Team Phoenix as well, I think. Yeah, I, I believe they had a few stingers here and there. Um, so yeah, I think uh, they did try to probably get in a, a few guns here and there, but uh, in the end, it's going to be Cloud6 who make it 2-0. And now it's going to be the full buy coming in from the side of uh, Team Phoenix, uh, the defenders, but with the exception of uh, a judge as well. Yeah, a judge and a spectator in the hands, but other than that, uh, they are going to be okay. An interesting wall there uh, from the Sage. Uh, doesn't really cover out the entry, but uh, covers off. Uh, yep. uh, yeah. Uh, but I believe it gives you like a small space to hide next to the switch where the wall mm-hmm. just closes in. Yeah. Which might be a good uh, sneaky angle, but uh, in the end, no one rushes B, so it might be a waste there. 
Uh, another thing that I don't like is these early balls that you don't have it for the retake. Meanwhile, Smurf will find that kill onto a dip though. That's a little bit going into the Team Phoenix. The flash comes through, but no one is actually through that. So those are flashes wasted where they don't really get anything done out of it. And Smurf will finally go down to Katana there uh, on the breach. Uh, so they will get the trade. Uh, this is a problem with the new KO. You, I mean, he could have, but he the angles that he used the flashes in, he was not able to pick uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just too late. Like, uh, I feel like Phoenix has the right mentality, they have the right agents for it, but then again, uh, they're not using the abilities for the, you know, as you said, the maximum potential. Because as you said, the early Sage Worlds doesn't really make sense if you don't hear anything. And in the end, the KO flashes, he did flash, but in the end... Imagine the hand, finds two, Spike looking down for the third, the Gaz will get the trade there, but that's massive here. Gaz is extremely low, just 1 HP, just one shot, he's gonna take him down, so it's essentially uh, a 2v1, but Jet, meanwhile, will get one pick. Both these players are extremely low. One we'll enemy one remaining. Gets the as well, down to the last, he's hiding inside the cover, and undead to clean it up, yet. and they will recover things, making it a 2-1 going into the fourth round here. Team Phoenix on the board. It was a, an expensive round for Team Phoenix, Cloud6 should be happy with it. They managed to remove three bundles off the board, uh, but in the end, the round is for Team Phoenix, and I believe this should be still a, a bit of a scrappy buy coming in from Team Phoenix, but uh, Cloud6 should be able to recover five rifles as we head on into round number four. Indeed, we uh, did see a bulldog come out uh, on half shields. Uh, we have a couple of bundles, uh, half shields to play with as well. Uh, we have the Brimstone with no money at all. He might be even looking to just play with the classic here. Let's wait and see. I, I suggest he buys up since the rest of the team has bought up. Uh, but uh, it is going to be a push towards this B side. We have two players holding this. Uh, Brim is going to be able to get into Kabi here outside of B. And he is going to be holding the judge here as well. This is a good map for the judge now. Yes, it is. And uh, well, we, we did see Seho judge in the other round, managing to get two kills in A. And uh, I guess he has the right play here, but this time, Team Phoenix playing a bit slow and Gurami there taking down the Reina. A nice shot. Yeah, indeed. Uh, good shots coming out from him. Uh, and now the front uh, That's uh, a bit too obvious. But he might actually get two here for that. They did not clear him properly. Jet is also extremely low. Find almost another no gas will be able to get the trade, but meanwhile Persona will find Gurami all the way the middle. And Persona Spike finds down, another one for the third. Will find the third as well to clean up and Team Phoenix uh, and now coming back strong here. Can't use this yet. Uh, the fact that the smoke worked, I believe, is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that was quite obvious, but still, uh, the Omen and I believe the other player was the breach. Uh, tried to push it. I I guess they didn't expect uh, a judge. Maybe in the hands of Seha. But in the end, uh, he got two kills there, and it was a clean round in the end for the side of Team Phoenix. The scoreline is even, and uh, Cloud6 are forced to save this round. Yeah, we do have one on the Vandal. I think it might be a Reeb here on the Vandal, but the rest of them... are oh, sorry, it was the Chamber who is on the Vandal. The rest of them are on a very scrappy buy here, with Spectres or Half Shields or Ghost to play with. Pardon their wish. Uh, so unfortunately, Adib did spot him, but he had, uh, I believe, only a sheriff in his hand. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Seha was able to run away with his life intact. Gas gets spotted here, and Persona is going to be good for the kill. Uh, uh, tap onto the head, and now the spike is down. Meanwhile, they will recover the spike. The flash again, I, I, I don't think it's the best utilization of it. Uh, again, mm -hmm. no one really picking off of it. It's just a waste of utility overall. Uh, but they did, do get the first blood, so Team Phoenix with the advantage coming into the round now. And one has uh, moved himself into three there. Sorry, Wines. Things have slowed down a bit. Gurami will find Undead, the only man with the Vandal, will find one. And Smurf peeks through, will get uh, taken out by Jet, just not landing the shot. Jet is down to 5 HP though, making things uh, fairly even. And they will Ooh, find the KO as well. I like this positioning from uh, oh. Team Phoenix, but in the end, uh, I, I feel like, you know, the, the Reina there had a nice position. Okay, actually, Seha does get one pick and should be able to res the KO without any interruption. Uh, meanwhile, the spike uh, with, in the hands of Cloud6 is moved towards B. The jet is extremely low, so it's going to be only 
uh, the katana uh, with full HP left in this. Wait, 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 Gurami. <laughs> Oxy actually moved past Gurami there, and Gurami just waited patiently to see if another player would push. Trigger the discipline from him. We'll find that kill onto the Sage, making it a 2v3 retake now. Up to you Phoenix on Lee on the back foot here. But Persona oh. sees the jet. A 2v2. Uh, 2v2. Gurami will find Persona. will be able to teleport out. And will be able to take out uh, Seha as well, making it 3-2 now, taking the lead back here. Cloud 6. But a uh, bit of a funny round there. Uh, I'm not sure what the breach was doing. Uh, did he fault line the spike? I think he um, did. I saw him using the fault line and it looked like it had, it had only hit the spike, so he was maybe aiming it at the ground. I'm not entirely sure what happened right. there. But, uh, and Sena, Seha actually used the orbital strike there yeah. as well. I think it was into both house there. So they are not going to be able, uh, not going to have this for that round. But so far, it's going to be a 3-2 Cloud6 in the lead. They do have uh, the Tour de Force as well as the Hunter's Fury to work with for this round. And even uh, the Omen Ultimate, if they decide to quickly get out of there or even take the spike to somewhere else. But Gurami holding the angle does spot the chamber, or rather does spot the KO, which is Persona. But in the end, it's going to be Gaz who gets the kill. And a quick kill there to start things off this round. So far, playing D4, but Gaz does spot a second player inside of uh, Tree. Oh, but Smurf is going to be good for the kill there. We'll find and recover a Vandal most probably. He's trying to recover it at least. I don't think, I don't know whether he, he did recover the Vandal and manages to find Gurami as well and he's able to dismiss out, making it a 3v4 now, uh, making it a bit, a little bit tough for Cloud6 now. Uh, but the spike still in hands of the Breach here all the way uh, in uh, Tiles with the Omen. That is looking I feel like well, the fact yeah. of having you know both a fade and a KO actually gives uh, the defenders enough info to actually hold on to the two sides because you have your uh, KO knife, which you can mm -hmm. use to actually detect a lot of uh, space in A main. You've got your fade playing inside B, having the prowlers to clear off B main and also having the Leah uh, to you know get info in mid as well, which, which gives uh, Team Phoenix a lot of time as well as space to move their players and hold on to a side. And I think they're making really good use of it so far. But with 10 seconds left, uh, Cloud6 runs into side. Uh, Adib is not spotted. He will find one. Katana finds Oxy as well. And making it a 2v3 now. Uh, trying to fight this out. Uh, Smoke will get taken down, leaving uh, Seha with a ghost in hand to try and win this out. He needs to recover a Vandal if possible. He One two players are extremely low, so if he does manage to get a gun, this round is extremely winnable for him. Uh, he only has to deal with Adib if he manages to get into sight. Fault line going to be used. He has recovered a gun, so he's going to be moving forward with that Phantom. Spots out one, looking for more here. He's going to get surrounded. He cannot push like that. He needs to look for a pick before he pushes. But he was running out of time there as well, and it uh, gives Cloud6 a two-round lead here. It's 4-2. Uh, going into the seventh round. I feel like Cloud6 were actually on the back foot uh, before the uh, entry into B side win because they, I believe that they had 10 seconds left. There were three players al alive against a 3v5. But in the end, they somehow managed to turn the tables and uh, the scoreline is 4 2 in favor of Cloud6. And uh, Gurami has the Tour de Force for this round as well. Should be able to capitalize on those long angles and Team Phoenix once again going for a bit of a broken buy. I feel like if Team Phoenix took a better time to reset to save uh, to save credits for one run. Maybe they would have uh, the superior rifles heading into a round like in all five players' hands. But so far, they're deciding to kind of force into these rounds. Indeed. Uh, they have been forcing almost uh, every single round here. So, uh, like you said, they don't really have the weaponry to be able to contest the majority of these rounds. They have been on Spectres. They have been on... Uh, judges, but of course the Brim is uh, very satisfied just playing the judge uh, for the time being. Meanwhile, uh, 24 is not going to work out. Persona is going to be able to get that kill with a Bulldog, no less. And now the Hunter's Fury is going to be used onto that uh, KO. We'll find that kill. It is going to be Adib who is going to be able to find that gas. Uh, Gaz, meanwhile, finds Smurf as well. Undead will get the trade and the judge is going to work yet again. And Adib will fall in the hands of uh, Oxy here, uh, making it a 3-4.
again the judge uh, winning uh, team finishes around this uh, brimstone with this judge has been doing a lot of work yes indeed uh, the judge in the hands of seha put to good use here and look at it seha seven kills are uh, doing a lot of work for the team with the smokes the mollies as well especially with the judge there and yeah so far both these teams are looking quite on par the scoreline is 4-3 and both i mean all of these rounds are going quite close Indeed, and um, he is going to go back into the judge with half shield. I think someone could have bought it for him, but he decides to go half shields there. And a bit of a, a lot slower push coming out from Cloud6 here, uh, looking for info, looking for anyone who is, uh, you know, uh, you know, confident enough to uh, push through, but uh, it does not look like they are. Uh, meanwhile, walled off uh, B main here uh, for the timing, not. Uh, the best of walls, I would say, but uh, and a bit of an early wall there as well. Uh, but he is going to utilize it, going to delay things for the time being. At least, uh, you know, he's able to get info uh, when the wall breaks. But since it's early, they can just wait for the wall to go down uh, if they want to enter into the site. Right. I feel like from Cloud6 so far, the pressure towards mid has been a bit low. Like they, they have uh, tried to entry from Calvog. But so far, like the market pushes have been solely from uh, the Omen or like the Chamber, just uh, trying to sneak in and not a really aggressive push coming in from, or, or rather a coordinated push coming from market. The meanwhile, but Smurf finds the jet at uh, Tiles there. So that's the first pick going in favor of uh, Team Phoenix. This is a lot even in terms of a game uh, compared to the last one. And side control uh, almost taken. Yeah, it is taken uh, by uh, Team Phoenix. So now for the retake, Smurf finds uh, the kill onto Gasly as well, making it a 3v5 for the retake. Smurf finds another. That's his third kill. Looking for more here. The flash is through. And Oxy will be pushing through. The Katana will find Persona. Looking for another. Finds two. Smurf is on an ace here right now. But Senna is going to be taking out Katana. Taking the Smurf away from the Reina. He was on the Empress, but makes it 4-4. Team Phoenix making it all even yet again. Uh, but but the thing is, uh, do you still uh, believe in the fact that this is a defense favored map? Um, I guess not. I feel like tough question, right? With the change of uh, compositions, uh, change of agents, have made it you know kind of even for both sides. I would say now. I would agree with you, yeah, because you have a lot of ways of playing to make sure, like you can condition players to actually not play in those default spots. You have a lot of utility you can use. You have your mollies, you have your shock darts, you have your KO uh, nades and everything. So you can actually get into site quite free, I, I feel like. Rolling Thunder going to be utilized into a site here and they are going to be dashing into the site and the judge at work, Senna <laughs> going, oh my lord, someone stop this guy. But Team Phoenix with a quick round, thanks to Senna taking out three on entry. I think he caught the Rolling Thunder as well. I'm not sure how we managed to yep, get he was kills. He was stunned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like he was at the edge of it, so maybe it didn't last as long, but still he was stunned when he peaked for the first kill. And uh, he somehow managed to get uh, three kills there before he was finally taken down. And a really good hold coming in from uh, the side of Team Phoenix. I feel like Cloud6 tried to rush into it, but then they weren't expecting uh, to you know, be faced with the judge head-on. So yeah, a really easy and quick round there for the side of Team Phoenix. Uh, meanwhile, the partner is going to be used. They are trying to come into the side. The wall is going to be there. They will break through it, uh, looking to clear out the angles. Uh, and it will get smoked off for the time being, at least. And uh, Sena, Sena has actually uh, changed his position. Five players all the way st uh, stuck outside of, uh, you know, B side for the time being. Will they rotate it again? Because uh, they can't, because there's so much space taken by Team Phoenix. Look at where uh, Smurf is on the Reina. He has uh, cleared out all of A, uh, taken control of Catwalk as well now. And he's going to be spotting out at least a couple of players on uh, B tiles here. We'll take out one onto a deep. They're uh, good kill to have. And they're look Smurf is looking for more though. He needs to be careful. Playing a little bit aggressive here, but he's going to get shot in the back because Gasly rotated all the way through spawn and hits him from the back, making it uh, even on either side. Yep, was getting a bit too aggressive there, but in the end it's going to be a 44 and Persona also becoming a bit too aggressive and the Gurami will take him down the spike. Meanwhile, is coming towards A, but look at this, Seha is already behind Jen with the all too uh, famous judge in his hands. So the players left. are still stuck towards mid and oh no, Gurami will not get spotted by that Prowler. They are unaware of this uh, lurk coming in from him. The defenders are reading this though. They are going back towards B. But I think Gurami here might be able to catch Seha's guard if he 
times it perfectly. Katana uses the false line here. The nightmare going to be used by the Fed as well. Uh, meanwhile, Gurami finds a kill on to Undead here. And Oxy will get the trade on the gas. Uh, it mixes the 2v3 for the retake. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. But Katana will find Oxy leaving the Brimstone. The man with the judge. Can he clutch it out? It's a 1v3. Yes, indeed. He decides to switch to the classic instead. Uh, of course, I believe, you know, just dissecting that round, uh, Gurami did not get spotted there with the Prowl, and there you go, Katana will end things off. But, I mean, in the, in the meantime, there was a lot of lurks coming in from mid. Uh, I believe two players of Cloud6 came in from market. Uh, Gurami was lurking in from tree, and they managed to just, you know, use utility from mid to make the positioning for the Sage, uh, uh, rather, for the Breach to get into sight, uh, to get the spike down, and, and it worked out for them in the end. I believe uh, it was in the mid, I think it was Persona, who, who tried to get a bit more, a bit too aggressive in mid after the initial pick from uh, Reyna, which I think was a bit unnecessary. Uh, but in the end, uh, yeah, a good run, and a good read rather from Cloud6 to win that run. Yeah, I think the Reyna just stayed, uh, overstayed his welcome there, he should have backed off after that first kill, but he decided to stay and uh, paid for it with his life. Uh, I mean, that should have been a free pick, but ended up being a trade. Uh, meanwhile, the peeps Hold coming down. through uh, a uh, a main here, Molly going to be able to delay things, the aftershock is going to push the Brimstone off of his angle, going to force no him to cut off and he comes back and Can now the that? Hunter's Fury going to be used by the Sova to get into the site as well, Brimstone with the ultimate, they will find the first kill on the Persona, he is on his ultimate, now finds one, Seha finds another onto the jet with the judge. Uh, but once I again mean, the chamber coming in from tree should be able to no never mind the prowler actually i think the problem missed him yet again yeah they do get the reserve gas i managed to get the kill though but they get trailed by some of they did bait it out katana will find seha who was on the judge it's a 2v3 now for the defense candidate I do this the blind. Uh, Snuff just get part of the support and Grammy finds under making it even. Snuff finds another, uh, making it uh, just a chamber to try and take the last player standing. Uh, got control of India uh, and now Blood. looking for the last and Grammy goes here, takes out four faces? and Sorry, he goes absolute hand to clutch that out, making the it a six five going into the last round before the half. Indeed, a quite an even game here with both teams trading off each other, using the utility to their best. I, I mean, it's 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 really nice to watch how the flashes, the concussors, the flashes, everything are working in sync, and uh, Gurami there just uh, better with his aim and managing to clutch things off with his for his team with the 3k. And the scoreline is 6-5. Cloud6 barely in front, and the Team Phoenix trying to even things off uh, as the first half does come to an end. Standing ahead. Recon now into the uh, B side here, trying to gain some information. Not really going to get down. anything out of it though. Uh, Prowler into B main, uh, not catching out anyone either. So Prowlers have been uh, kind of off point, not really getting any information and missing out on key players uh, hiding in corners. Things have slowed down quite a bit. They are moving towards that A site uh, with the spike in hand. It's just going to be the Soa who is lurking all the way in. Uh, tiles here. I mean, uh, Gurami finds the first pick onto uh, Persona. Fortline dash into the site as well. They have control of the site and the plant will find the go down. Gurami uh, will find Seha who was uh, picking through down to very low HP. I've tried to peek again with the judge there, but it's going to be Reyna on his Empress, on her Empress rather, trying to get the early entry site. We'll, we'll take down one. Gurami, making it a 4v3. Spot the second player inside heaven. We'll take him down as well. It's going to be 3v3. Well. Resurrection comes out onto Persona as well, making it a 4v2. But they have to get the diffuse in, and now the delay is coming out. They are going to be pushing forward. Oh, Snuff with a lovely pick onto a G. Katana goes huge here, gets a 1 2. But the spike has been diffused, making it an all even 6 6 half with the final kills after the timer going down. Yep. The, the null coming in from the KO, the, pers uh, the, the knife coming in from him was I believe the cherry on top because the rolling thunder was ready for Katana but he couldn't use it because he was nulled and the same is true for the paranoia as well uh, so yeah I guess that was a perfect use of utility by them to uh, clean things up and it's going to be a terror it's going to be a 6-6 as we head on into the second half Indeed, and uh, it's uh, definitely going to be an interesting uh, second half here, uh, especially uh, after that uh, game number one, semi-final number one, where uh, it was, uh, you know, 
completely dominated by Alpha Q. Uh, Alpha Q, it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, these two teams uh, butting heads here, especially since, uh, you know, it is a 6-6 six, six half. But of course, this is a best of three series. Uh, this is just game number one, which is uh, which has got this interesting. So we know that it's going to be uh, an action-packed semifinal between these two teams. Uh, but uh, just before that, a massive shout out to Lenovo, uh, who is powering the entire event. If you're in the market for a new laptop, make sure to check out their new Legion series of gaming laptops. Uh, if you are into, uh, you know, esports, uh, I definitely would suggest uh, getting yourself a Lenovo uh, Legion uh, gaming laptop as well. A shout out to SLT Mobile as well, our goal partner, and also uh, Game Not Okay. Our esports partner, also our technology partners, as well as our display partner, laptop.k, and the entirety of a Royal College uh, Computer Society for hosting uh, the entire event. With that, we will be heading into a very short break before the second half. Do stay tuned in with us. You're joining us for Gear Up, the Inter School Esports Championship hosted by Royal College Columbus Society. What makes a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology. We understand that we're better when we come together and that we're at our best when we champion each other's success. For decades, SLT Mobidil has been linking Sri Lankan lives spearheading Sri Lanka's technological transformation and uniting the nation. Whatever the future may look like, or wherever it may take us, we'll always be right here, connecting you to the things you care most about. SLT Mobitel, the connection. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gear Up, the Inter-School Esports Championship hosted by Royal College uh, Colombo Computer Society. And of course, uh, you're joining us for semi-final number two, uh, game number one here between uh, Wesley College Colombo and Isipathana College. And it's a 6-6, six, six, even half going to this game number one on Ascent. We're just about to head into uh, the second half. Uh, Kiri, what do you think uh, in terms of uh, composition, uh, who do you think has the advantage uh, here uh, with the side switched? Uh, well, yes, indeed, so far it has been an eventful first half, but still, to be fair, I, I think it's still anyone's game, uh, Tara. Indeed, and... Uh, I what, am what, quite yeah. uh, happy about the fact that there's a K on the side of the attackers. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they have an edge there in terms of, you know, getting info, because they have two initiators. But I still feel like uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Indeed, uh, and yeah, I, I think I would have to agree with the double initiator. Uh, you know, Team Phoenix might Watching have the advantage smoke. here on the attacking half. Uh, we will have to wait and see here, though. The Fed uh, not going to be uh, getting any information off of that, and they will be backing off uh, towards uh, that B side. But a bit of a default, making a little bit of noise all the way at A. But uh, Cloud Six has not fallen prey to this, and they are going to be rushing into uh, this uh, B side here. They are going to wall off their entry to. Uh, yeah, uh, ooh, guys will get a kill with the shot dart, and Seha will find two quick kills, Murph will find the kill onto the jet as well, now it's a 2v4 uh, for the retake, a tough retake for Cloud6, but uh, I mean, it's a pistol round, anything can happen. Uh, is Are they going to clear this angle, it's going to get a up, it's through, Murph uh, will find the kill onto Adib, Gurami finds two quick kills, but Persona will be able to get the trade, and it's going to be Team Phoenix so winning the pistol round. Uh, that was uh, quite a... That was not, I, I would say, the normal what we see, because, I mean, when you normally wall it off uh, in B like that, 
what you expect to do is you try to wall off all the angles so you could just walk through lane. But yeah. uh, what this wall essentially did was it covered off uh, the stairs as well as uh, the CT, which meant yeah. they could walk into the switch uncontested and peek from both sides as well, which is uh, not something that, I, that I've seen before, but I think it worked out for them uh, in this round. Yeah, because I think that the problem with that wall is that anyone who's coming out from uh, coming in from uh, market is going to market be able to come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could uh, see either way. Oh, meanwhile, the push coming through uh, into the smoke. Smurf will find a deep there. Adib did get one kill there, and he is uh, going to be backing off on that way now. On Smurf. So it's a one for one trade. That's a recovered. But Seha again with, with the judge. The judge. Uh, Smurf also going to be able to find that to find the third kill as well. Onto the jet, looking for the fourth. Finds the fourth onto Katana. Making it an 8 6. Of course, it was their buy round coming out, and they were on a save on the side of Cloud 6. But good god, this judge has been giving us so much action here. Uh, in this <laughs> yes, indeed. And the Rainers the entire day have been absolutely dominant. Both uh, Reyna, uh, the Smurf right now, uh, as well as Russell earlier today. They've, ha they've been having some really good games and, uh, you know, just MVPing for both their teams. Indeed, uh, and uh, mind you, this time around, though, uh, he's not really uh, the Reyna on this map. He has been picking off of his own utility. He's not too dependent on right, right, uh, right. Uh, anyone uh, anyone else either. He has been fragging out uh, majority of the time on his own. And uh, he has been uh, doing quite a bit of work, sometimes a little bit too aggressive and costing them around. But uh, having said that, he has been the one who is fragging out for the team. So costing them one or two rounds doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, there was early info gained with the drone, or rather lack of, of info. Charges. They thought there would be players, but everyone was hiding, so that's a... They assumed oh, that they might be pushing towards uh, towards B, or rather apologies towards A, and they're just trying to barrel into the B side as we can. There we go once again. The wall is pushed, this time uh, hurdling towards lane, and that's going to be a free side given towards the side of Team Phoenix as we head on into uh, what could possibly be a 5v5 in the first round. Planted. Indeed, and they do have the better weaponry on the side of Cloud6, but uh, Seha has to judge. <laughs> so there's the weapon to be worried about uh, in this matchup, I think. And uh, all five players are stuck inside the side from Team Phoenix, so it's going to be a tough one for them to hold if uh, cleared properly here, but they don't have a lot of utility to work with as the judge at work, fine. Not going to be able to find it. Uh, finds one actually onto the jet, but will get traded out. Uh, and it's going to be a two for them. Kept on holding the cross, it's going to be Aviv hidden in the back by the Smurf and Gurami. We'll take him down, leaving him in a 1 3 but the clock is ticking down and in the end, One good for another. a second, but uh, yeah, he's we'll have to run away with the Vandal. So yeah, consolation prize, a gun saved, but the scoreline is going to be 9 6. We were talking about uh, how the KO lineup might have the better advantage on attack, and uh, I think it is kind of showing, right? They they are getting free entries into the site. The utility has been good enough uh, that they are getting this information that uh, no one is in sight. And uh, interestingly enough, that Sage Wall seems to keep working because there is no one uh, peeking through markets, uh, right. so it has been uh, working out quite well for them. Because okay. I believe uh, the knife is is probably enough to keep the breach utility at bay. Where the, the 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 breach has to be either far behind, so he doesn't get caught into it, or like when he does get caught, he can't use his utility. And to start things off once again, Ave will get taken down by the Rainer. An early advantage for the side of Team Phoenix. No smokes for the side of Cloud6 to work oh, with. A bit not clear. And Smurf looking for another kill. Will find that kill. Orbital strike going to be used. Not going to be good enough. Reina will get taken out by Katana. Not managing to get into Kavi there uh, with that uh, this miss, but uh, making it a three v four. Tree control has been taken by the Brimstone. He is going to be lurking up with this judge in hand. Could yeah, probably be good to take down the jet, but no, he dashes through. And Katana coming behind will take down Seha. That is the judge uh, out of the hands of Team Phoenix. It's going to be a 3v3 as we head on. And the players try to make their way towards B, but get spotted from Catwalk by uh, the Breach. And yeah, it's going to be the jet waiting for, for them as they head on into side. Father the in hand. Ooh. Oh, actually gets down one kill there. I mean, he managed to go past him into the site and then decided to, you know, and then decided to the sheriff. Right. <laughs> there's the sheriff. Well, let me pick him and pay the price for it. Uh, it's going to be a 3v2 now. Uh, advantage to the retake here. Plenty of utility to work with, though. There's, they have a flash as well as an A to keep these defenders at bay. Uh, the counter flash does Ooh, not come in. Gurami will get one kill that is undead off the board, and Gurami cleans things up first, and I will get taken down. Finally, a good read from Cloud6 to get the first round in the second half. 
Yazid and uh, that's what they were looking for. It kind of looked like it was getting away from them and they managed to convert one of their buys here. But of course, uh, Team Phoenix is going to be having enough money to buy up uh, this round as well and uh, which they are going to be doing. One thing that I, I, I was looking at this scoreboard, right? And I was realizing mm -hmm. is that there is no eco-sharing between uh, the players? Team Phoenix. Uh, right, they, they yeah. Yeah, they, they haven't because I, I saw Se Seha multiple times buying into the judge with half shields when there were teammates who could have bought in the judge. Uh, there were certain rounds the Reyna was actually capped and uh, Seha was actually, uh, you know, just barely buying into all, all that he had. So there haven't been any eco sharing in terms of uh, team picks here. I didn't see the same from Cloud6 though, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, there hasn't been any. So now the delay is going to be there. The rush is going to get stopped from. Uh, Cloud6, a good read and a good uh, stoppage coming there from the bridge there. Uh, he didn't get caught to the KO knife as well, so he was able to use the fault line as well as the aftershock to stop that aggression uh, that uh, Team Phoenix has shown entering this uh, B side. Indeed, so as the dust settles, it's going to be still four players uh, of Team Phoenix stuck towards B. Uh, they are looking to you know, cut sound, it. make Cloud6 think it's going to be a, a, an A push and then just rush back in. But oh, it's going to be uh, Katana speaking through and seeing the Reyna. Uh, bullets do get exchanged, but I do not think anyone got uh, tagged healing. from that encounter. I think the Reyna and the bridge both no. got tagged, I think. Never mind, there you go, yeah. I didn't see the graphic there. But there we go, Sage on one side and Reyna is back to 100 HP. And with 40 seconds left, still looking to make an A percent. I think the KO there might have DC'd, maybe? No, Never he's mind. There, he's, he's, there. Just, he just, he's just looking at it. Yep. Flash is going to be there. Persona gets uh, spotted out, but he will. Uh, sorry, Gurami gets spotted out, but he's going to be able to get the kill on Smurf there. And uh, that is going to be a five man retake coming in and a four man hold coming in from the side of Team Phoenix here. Uh, Seha with the judge. Holding the cheek angle. So, Katana is going to be really powerful this round if he does manage to get another kill. If he does put Seha hiding inside of Lux. So one spots him out, and meanwhile, Adib and Jet both uh, will take down. And uh, it is going to be Jet uh, cleaning out the last man alive, which was Undead, who did manage to get uh, gas, but uh, it's a tough one for him to fight up against all five players alive. And uh, Cloud6 coming back into this game now, it's 9 8. That's indeed. I feel like what happened like the first two or three rounds of uh, the Team Phoenix attacking round was the fact that Cloud6 tried to go for an aggressive retake mm -hmm. and it didn't work out for them because they had they had to like face Seha with the Judge or even uh, the Reyna on Empress. Whereas now when they just take a few seconds to reset, they take a few seconds to actually wait till the players get in position, they get the utility back and then go for that retake with all of the utility that, that's working out really well for them. And Team Phoenix are having a hard time just keeping that utility at bay because they don't have any post plant stuff to work with in terms of uh, utility in the hands of their KO or their fate. They are going for uh, a main push here with two players that are coming to the catwalk. There's no one watching catwalk right now other than uh, I think it was uh, yeah, uh, Gurami who will find Seha on the judge and the recon. Not really spotting anyone out. Undead managed to pick up that. Uh, Ultimate Abu, he gets spotted out now. He picked out a little bit uh, too early, but uh, no real impact in terms of uh, just information as to where they are. Uh, Smurf with a marshal looking for a pick at mid uh, into market. Not going to find it, but things have slowed down quite a bit. And it's a good read coming out from Cloud6 also. They haven't over rotated, they're still holding their angles and not really over rotating because we still have three players uh, with pressure on that A site. And this might be worth wrong from the side of the teams here. Adib will get uh, spotted out to that KO knife here. Shock dart to delay things. We have Gaz with an Odin in hand. Fowler stopped and Adib needs to be careful. He again finds one. Uh, Master shot sits on to Adib. He's going to smoke this off for the time being the prop. And they are trying to push out the KO. We get taken down for that Odin which was being spammed through. Uh, realizing with the flash came through that it was coming. Now the fault line is going to be used as well to try and delay even more. But the spike is still in the hand, so now they're lurking here, expecting uh, the side of team finish to rotate. But what they have all five players alive, they don't really go in there. Under will get taken on that. But it's going to be good for the next kill as well. Bringing out the classic and putting Hopsley down, making it nine even between the two teams. Yes, indeed. This is an extremely fair game between these two teams, uh, reading each other to a perfect tee. And uh, the scoreline, uh, it just shows it completely well. 
the scoreline is 9-9. Uh, there is a lot of utility for Cloud6 to work with for this as well. The Hunter's Fury, Rolling Thunder, and even the Toto Force in the hands of Gorami if need be. But they are stacked. They have enough credits to last for a few more rounds as well. So Team Hello, Phoenix, this is a much needed round for Team Phoenix to stay in the game. Because if they lose this, uh, I believe they might have to save again. Uh, so yeah, they will have to play this a bit safer. But having said that, they decide to rush Just into mid and look at this. Utility invested. Oh, finds two with it. That's insane for guys there. Jet in the meantime will uh, we'll find Persona as well. Then he can a 2v5 Rami on to Undead as well. Now the Sage alive. Hiding in the cubby. Will get taken down by Katana with the spam through. And Cloud6 get into double digits first. Who would have thought that this would happen with the start that they had? Yes, indeed. Uh, I guess Team Phoenix had a, had a great read there. But then again, Cloud6 had the better utility and the better ultimates to work with. They had the Rolling Thunder and the uh, Hunter Shuri. A really great execution there from both Katana and Gaz to use the utility together. There was, I believe, two kills on the Hunter Shuri for Gaz. And uh, just finishing off with some kills through the smoke by both the Jet and uh, uh, the Sova with the Odin in hand. And uh, a really good round to get to double jets, as you said, from Cloud6. Indeed. And now it's going to be again, yet again, a push coming towards that uh, A site here. Again, but something that I've had seen from Team Phoenix is that mid control. But ha having said that, it's a five man push through catwalk here. Not something that you see every day. But they are going to be going in. Chucky gets taken out. <laughs> Uh, the jet will get put down by Snuff there on the Brainer. And they have the judge in the middle. Ooh, the positioning! But a team finds three a. kills I before he is traded out by Undead. Making it a 2v2. Spike has been collected by Undead. Now he will Spike go for the plant planted. here. He will have time before anyone contest him. He will get the plant down. Guram in the meantime comes out the powder. We'll spot him out for the time being. He peeks One through. enemy remaining. Uh, he's tagged really low. Katana is going to be able to find that kill onto Undead. And now Seha with the judge in hand. One oh, enemy down. remaining. Going forward with the judge puts him down. And this man, he has the orbital strike to work with. The smoke to work with as well. He's going to be moving out. Uh, Aftershock trying to push him off the angle here. Undead again repositioning this guy. Seha. Molly. Absolute god here, Molly as well. Rotating around, he's playing and around that, with that could be the round for them. Flash and he bought enough time. He bought no. enough time. Did he? No, no I don't think so. Yeah, he did. <laughs> no way. Okay, this guy has been the most entertaining for the entire day. <laughs> I believe he only played a judge and, uh, and a ghost when he couldn't buy a judge. Yeah. And this That's all he has been playing. Yeah. He's running rings around Cloud6 and a really good read from him. And yeah, the scoreline is 10-10. So, uh, the, the thing that I like about what Seha did there was the fact that he threw out the molly. Me, my, I, I, since I heard the diffuse, I would have just jumped in with the judge, right? He's on the spike. Mm -hmm. I would have just jumped in. But he made sure, in case he whiffs the shots, yeah, he, he, had he a made sure that they win the round there with that molly into... Into the spike there, it's just uh, good heads up thinking there, you know, not being overly confident. Now the Odin yeah. spam at uh, B main uh, manages to tack up a couple of players, but uh, nothing too critical there. <laughs> Smurf onto the jet, we'll find that first pick looking for more. A spam in the stairs, not really finding anything. Mina Gurami will find Persona with the actually force there. Adib will find Seha as well. Judge out of play here. Shot guards will force the Reyna out of position here. Oxy will manage to get a reserve point to Persona here. And we have Bura, uh, sorry, we have uh, the uh, we have Adib who is pushing through markets here. They still haven't gone into side. Adib has not been read here. Two players pushing from behind. They're going to get pinched here. Adib uh, has a really good position here. He might be able to find one. Not really going to shoot him for the time uh, being. The trigger discipline. He's waiting oh, wow. for a second player to cross, but oh, oh no, no, he knife him. <laughs> uh, he pays the price of it though. Oh, he had the knife in hand. But meanwhile, Smurf will find two quick kills, and uh, now it's down to the last one, Katana, uh, to try and win this round. And he will find one though, making it a 1v2. Joe will get close to on him, and they will get the spike left. down. Uh, the Kyo knife will get some information. First one, will move into uh, the spawn area. He is going to be holding this. Uh, it's a good angle to check. Uh, I don't think Katana will be expecting this unless he decides to clear it. He does decide to take flashes through, but the flash does not catch out Persona. He was looking the other way, and he will turn around, will be able to get it, making it 11 10 now. What a tight game this has been. Uh, I feel like if Adib didn't try to knife him, he might have gotten two kills there, because mm -hmm. Persona was right behind him. Uh, but in the end, he decided to knife him, and uh, yeah.
things turned out the way they did. And 11-10, Team Phoenix just one round ahead, inches away from winning the game, but so far, quite a close game. Uh, I mean, tough to say if Adi would have been able to get both the kills if he did not go for the knife. But will he look back, if they end up losing this match one, right? right. Will he look back and think, hmm, maybe if I didn't knife? <laughs> always a I question. Mean, <laughs> always a question, yep. Because <laughs> if they won that round, maybe Phoenix wouldn't have enough money to buy this round. Yep. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that could happen. <laughs> but still, it is what it is. And uh, we head on into uh, the next round of the game. The 20, 22nd round. Yep, and uh, we have the judge moving into a tree here. Uh, it is going to be uh, the solo holding it and he will find the kill. Uh, Gaz will find the kill onto Seha now. A man down onto the attack, but the push is towards this B side here. Might have gained enough time for them to get into the side and they will. And Reyna, uh, holding a very off angle there, uh, will get spotted up by the jet tank. But Adip in the meantime will find Undead as well. Adip trying to get some information. Uh, Last player uh, sorry, boat house there. Yes, we'll find Persona. That's his second kill for the round. Leaving the Sage alone to try and win this 1v5. Odin in hand, but the you know, far up time on it uh, costing him. And Katana will find that kill, making it 11 11 in the two teams. Uh, going down Whoa. to the wire, we might first uh, see the first OT in this. At this rate. That's indeed, and it's going to be uh, quite a close game, and uh, it should be. Probably a broken by coming in from the side of Team Phoenix as they head on into match point. You have two Spectres, uh, two Randalls, and uh, probably a Judge once again from in the hands of Seha. So, yep, there you go. And Gurami brings out the first operator uh, in the match. If I'm not missing. I don't think there was an operator Yeah, before. Yeah. The first mm, time. No. Uh, Just the, uh, the totally Force. Mm -hmm, yep. And they also but, have uh, enough yeah. utility on both sides. They have. Uh, the ult in the hands of the kill. Oh, rolling Thunder going to be used to uh, push forward, but no one is there, so that's the Rolling Spike Thunder wasted. Down, you know, the operator from uh, Gurami will find uh, Seha, uh, who was on uh, B top there, sorry, uh, mid top but more there. importantly, that is the spike drop as well. The jet is already inching towards Gelado, and Katana with the Odin gets one more kill, and the jet should be able to pick off the fade if he decides to peek this. The Prowler spots him? Yes, it does. Looking really impossible for Team Phoenix at the moment. Mm. Tough, up, uh, tough one for them to try and get the spike here. Recon uh, spots out Persona. Katana in the meantime finds Oxy as well. Uh, making it a 2 v 5 now. Expect that yep. that range is not going to do anything. He is not able to get it. He has the flash in hand. Going to be using it. Trying to recover that uh, bundle. He does recover it. Manages to cross to the other side, and now the fault line going to be used. Persona needs to be careful. He has a knife in hand, trying to get some info. Uh, Undead in the meantime gets spotted out. He has uh, 30 seconds left. Last gets that information, but he's paranoia up, and uh, Adib uh, just playing around there. Paranoia's TPs and gets the kill onto Undead, match who is no longer undead and dead on the ground. And match point for Cloud Six. Yes, indeed, flawless. As we head on into match point, and that was a that was a first spike coming in from Team Phoenix last round. Which means they probably will have even less as we head on into the last round. Yes, indeed. Uh, a few sheriffs, or rather a sheriff and a few spectres across the board for the side of Team Phoenix as they try to stay alive in this match point. And Cloud6 looking quite stacked uh, in both credits and guns. Yeah, and uh, Team Phoenix is going to be a tough one for them to bring back. I'm not sure why they forced about uh, that round. Oh, but meanwhile, Smog finds one. He is going to go in, but at least no, be... Persona finds uh, Senna as well. Guram in the meantime will find Smog with that operator. Adip for the third kill onto Oxy, leaving the fade in a 1 3 4. I feel like Adib a... has yeah. had perfect positioning so far. Like, he, he has the trigger discipline to let players pass before, uh, you know, going for those spray transfers, trying to get two kills, three kills at, at a moment. And I think also, like, the fade utility hasn't been on point most of the time to actually clear those tight corners where uh, the omen likes to hide. Indeed, and uh, at least uh, by the end of this round, um, maybe Adib will not have to worry about that knife kill. <laughs> yes, indeed. He, his redemption arc is complete. <laughs> he does get the kill on Undead. 
Uh, they have no idea what uh, under this, but a lot of map controllers will take us, so they know that he's around the area. Uh, the ultimate is going to be used, he's going to get flashed up. Oh, well, good flick nice there. Uh, by Undead onto Adiv there. It's a 1v3, 30 seconds left, but he's going to get delayed even more. It's going to be a tough one for him to take now. He's going to get it pushed from behind as well. He's now trying to move forward, but Gazi coming from behind, blinded up, and Undead goes Defenders down. Win. And that's Wesley College, Colombo, Cloud6 winning. Game number one in this uh, best of uh, three series in semifinals. Number two, uh, map number two is going to be interesting. I think map number two is going to be on heaven. Uh, again, a first for the day. So we are seeing a lot of first for the day. We saw the first 10 different uh, agent match today. And then you mm -hmm. did see the first match uh, on Ascent as well. Uh, uh, and uh, good God, uh, Smurf going for 30 kills there. Gurami coming up close behind with 28. Uh, but uh, the highlight for me, of course, has been Seha, who was on that judge the entire judge. game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they might have lost the game, but that was quite entertaining from their side. I mean, they lost the match. The game is not over yet. That was the first map. We have two more to go if things do go all the way. The second map will be Haven. Cloud six, uh, Cloud 6 starting on defense. And if we do go all the way, will be ending uh, the day on bind yet again. Yeah, and I think uh, this is uh, Team Phoenix's map as well on Haven. Uh, so obviously they might have a couple of shots up their sleeves and uh, might be more comfortable uh, playing on uh, Haven here since it was their map pick, but we will have to wait and see. Having said that, uh, I think uh, we are going into a very small break, uh, just around a five minute break for the players to ready up and give them a bit of a you know reset before that game number two. But do stay tuned in with us. You're like joining us for Gear Up, the Inter-School Esports Championship uh, by Royal College Colombo Computer uh, Society. will be right back after this break. What makes a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology. We understand that we're better when we come together and that we're at our best when we champion each other's success. For decades, SLT Mobidil has been linking Sri Lankan lives spearheading Sri Lanka's technological transformation and uniting the nation. Whatever the future may look like, or wherever it may take us, we'll always be right here, connecting you to the things you care most about. SLT Mobitel, the connection.
journey with Data Bowen from SLT Mobitel Home Broadband. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to gear up uh, the Interschool Esports Championship by Royal College Colombo Computer Society. And you're joining us live for the semifinals of Warren, semifinal number two of Warren. It's Wesley College Colombo taking on AC Patana College Colombo. And it is, uh, we are going into game number two on Haven. Uh, Kitty, uh, Haven lineups. Uh, let's talk about uh, compositions here uh, initially. What do you think? Uh, yes, indeed, Tara. So uh, when it comes to controllers, I'm actually a big fan of uh, the Astra because, you know, we've got mm -hmm. three sites to defend. I believe Astra is a really good pick in terms of uh, having those orbs uh, for both uh, the smokes, the gravity walls, and the concussions. But then again, we've also seen uh, Omen being played really well by most agents. You've got the Paranoias, you've got the TPs, a lot of stuff you can work with. So I, I believe we'll see either an Omen or an Astra coming in from both these two teams as a controller. Uh, in terms of Duelist, we did see the Jet last round. Uh, last game, we did see... Uh, the, uh, we did see Smurf on Rain as well, so I, I, I guess uh, we could see uh, both the Jet and the Rainer coming in from uh, the respective teams uh, this time. Uh, in terms of uh, Sentinels, we did see the Sage, I think, uh, last game, which I think is also a staple when it comes to a map like uh, this. We can see the walls in B, uh, we, we see walls in Sword when it comes to the A push. So I think uh, we can see uh, either a Chamber or even a Sage coming in from these teams. We did see the Fade as well. Fade is yeah. a really Good agent, I believe, on a map like this. So I guess, yeah, a Fade, a Chamber, even a Sage, and uh, combining that with either Jet Arena and an Omen is what I expect to see on a map like Haven. Yeah, has uh, Phoenix kind of fallen off on Haven? I think uh, it was uh, Sentinels who brought out uh, Phoenix as uh, a very standard pick on Haven. Uh, I think, uh, I can't remember who, who it was. Uh, but yeah, uh, he was on uh, Phoenix the entire time that they played uh, Haven and Sentinels were very strong on it uh, due to the fact mm -hmm. that uh, uh, they had a Phoenix uh, on, on, on their team. Uh, but right. uh, uh, what do you think? Do you think Phoenix has fallen off? Uh, well, I mean, I, I guess that would depend on the play style of the team as well, because I guess for these two teams, I wonder if they will decide to go with the Phoenix. We can see Persona actually hovering over the Phoenix this time. Uh, if that is going to be their pick, we will have to see. But I guess Phoenix is a really strong agent in the hands of some teams, because you have the wall to work with, which is really useful when it comes to uh, making way into the seaside. We've seen teams using it to cover off uh, the garage entrance. We've seen teams using it to cover off one side when they attack into B. And yeah, and since you have those short angles to work with, uh, you can use the hot hands as well as um, the the flashes to a really good extent if you know how to play it. So if these, if if, if it's gonna you know actually work with the playstyle of these two teams, uh, we will have to see. Yeah, and we see Persona hovering over the Yoru as well. But right now we have the Breach picked up by Katana. Uh, no real agent. Uh, they're hovering over. That works well with the Breach right now. I think Jet is a very good option, especially at C long. Uh, and even at A long, for that matter, uh, being able to dash forward with the utility uh, being used by the Breach. But uh, it looks like we will see a Yoru here. yoru Reyna combination coming out from the side of uh, team Phoenix and then on uh, the side of our team uh, Cloud6 we have the Chamber, Soa, uh, Breach, uh, the Sage and the Omen. So no dualist lineup coming out from them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much the same lineup that we saw from them uh, in the last game with the exception of uh, the Omen. Mm -hmm. uh, the side of uh, team Phoenix is a bit more different. Rather, we have the Euro, we have uh, the Reyna, so it's going to be quite interesting to see how they play. As you said, uh, the Breach is a really good pick for a map like Haven, but you need to pair him with someone who can play off the flashes, someone who can play off the concussions, right? So we've seen uh, we've seen a raise with the Judge being played with the Breach. We've seen Jet yeah. dashing with the Breach, but then when you don't have that, you rely on you you rely on the Breach to just deny plants and to keep the attackers at bay. You really can't uh, use him to make aggressive plays unless you uh, pair him with someone who can play off him. Indeed. And uh, Yoru is an interesting pick. So the first time for the day as well for the Yoru to make an appearance here. Uh, so right now we haven't seen Neon, Phoenix. Uh, who else? Uh, Why? Oh no, well, you saw Wiper. Uh, and uh, we saw Astra as well. I think it's just the Neon um, and uh, uh, Neon that we haven't seen right now. Neon. Yep. We, we didn't see the Cypher either. Cypher oh, yeah, is, Cypher. with the buff, I guess Cypher is also a really good pick from a map like uh, Haven. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we did see, I, I believe, one player from Team Phoenix hovering over the Cypher, but then they uh, changed again. It, it would have been interesting to see uh, Cypher being played on a map like this, because I, I, I'm a really big fan of Cypher plays. And did, uh, if I remember right, you also play uh, a lot of sentinels, right? Uh, Chamber, Cypher. Is that what you have been playing continuously? Uh, no, I, I mostly play uh, controllers. Oh, okay. uh, you know, Astra, Primzone, the likes of that. But uh, yeah. We've seen some really creative plays after uh, the Cypher stuff because, you know, because the, the, the length of the tripwire was increased and uh, the ultimate also got above. So it's quite nice to see uh, the Cypher being brought back to action a bit more these days. But yeah, with that, uh, we are getting into round number one of game number two. Team Phoenix taking on Cloud6 and it's going to be a C push by the looks of it. Gurami misses the first two shots from the Headhunter. Uh, not really going to find anything. Uh... Bit. Going to get some information, but get taken out. We played in the headhunter again, manages to TP out. Uh, Chunky in the nice, meantime, nice. win the chaos, will find one. Rami will find another with that last bullet, but Undead coming in, feeling out both, making it a 3v3 now uh, with the wall planted up. But now the push coming in from behind. Spike is all the way at A. What? I did not see that covering, but. <laughs> No so way, what is are they good for one? Are they good for a second? So it's going to be the spike planted all the way in A. And it's going to be Seha left alone in a 3v, uh, in a 3v1, yeah. So he, he's made his way into B, so he should be able to probably catch one playoff guard. Enemy down. Yes, he does, but Fine, that's well. the info given to the rest of the defenders that this guy's probably going to come from, uh, from A shot. He could go heaven, but then again, he cannot see spike from there, so it's going to be a drop for him. Is really dangerous if Gaz is expecting it, and yes, he does. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a weird combo. To, I mean, we we've seen it happen. We've seen players baiting it, but then again, uh, Cloud Six couldn't get out, or rather, Team Phoenix couldn't get back in time to actually help say half a close plan. So I guess a good plan, but not the best execution of it. Yeah, and I think uh, what caught them off guard was Cloud Six pushing with two players uh, from C long from there. Behind, yeah. Uh, yeah, from behind, uh, they were not expecting that. Uh, but uh, interesting to say the least. Uh, I didn't expect them to pull off something like that in the first place around. Absolutely, and even even until you said it, I didn't even see the fact that Se had planted all the way inside A. <laughs> I was just so focused on the gunfights happening in C. Because I was wondering why aren't they planting? Right, they had control of sight. I'm like, why is the spike? And I see Seha all the way in A with the spike in hand. But meanwhile, Smurf has been tagged up uh, uh, very low. They have got a little bit of control, but Gaz oh, will find Smurf timing. there. And the yep. uh, Omen will back off for the time being. And that is going to be the first pick going in favor of uh, Cloud9. The Omen is tagged extremely low, though. Uh, the the spike yet again. Spike yet again going towards A. Seha alone with the spike. The problem with this play is if Seiya gets spotted out and he goes down, that's going to be a tough uh, place to get the right, spike yeah. from, uh, especially on a save round. I mean, well, uh, Oxy gets spotted out uh, all the way at mid, Undead also in window here, behind the smoke, uh, fall down to the uh, trying to pick, and that's a good fall line, Oxy down to really low HP here, 29 HP, the aftershock will push him off, uh, and will get taken down by Gaz, who was on that shock dart. Uh, meanwhile, like Adib is extremely low. He, he's creeped all the way into A side, holding this really oh, tight shot. angle. Trying to lurk behind the players. I think he did hear the player go left. into heaven. And... No, yeah, he doesn't. He whiffed the shot A. and Sage will find flawless. the kill. And that's a spike down. And Katana to clear things up. And that's a flawless coming out from uh, Cloud6. Uh, I mean, if this guy hit the shots, uh, there might have been, you know, an off chance that he was able to at least get the plan down. But mm -hmm. uh, because... I mean, the Omen was, Adib was also extremely low. If he managed to get that Sage there, I think uh, he would have got two kills uh, for free. Uh, because right. he knew that Adib was already there because uh, he did uh, tag him out before. And uh, I mean, ah, tough one. Yeah, that's the risk of, you know, trying to lurk, especially with the spike in hand. Because uh, the first thing is, you know, you can't help your team for gunfights. You can't refrag of a teammate. Can and the second thing is, if you die, then the spike is going to be really hard to recover. So it's it's a gamble to play and it didn't work out for them this time, but maybe we might see it done more and more as the game progresses. Raj got walled off, uh, but they will break the uh, wall for the time being. They are trying to go in, but there is slow ups, there is a trademark also slowing things down. And the Leo will delay things after shocking and there's a throw it out also in the meantime, we'll find the team. Uh, Katana with that aftershock and the slow ups there will find Seha. So he's uh, no longer playing with Raj, I think. Was he on the Bulldog in the hands of Persona. 
And Smoke is going to be good for the kill on Gads. He's going to be able to get that over heal off as well. A good round coming out uh, with uh, Team Phoenix on that full buy. Uh, leaving the chamber alone and they have taken control uh, entirely of uh, B site here. And now pushing through Garage. Gurami will find one onto Persona. Good shots coming out from him. Uh, in a one we uh three but uh, two players are extremely low sage uh, might have the heal back uh, in a little bit uh, it's just the rain yeah, if he does play time it. he should be able to get him before he gets healed up oh. and mind you all three players are extremely right now rami has a really good chance of winning this but then again one, one. looking for more he has to reload and oxy will okay. clean him up so it's going to be two one but uh a big eco damage done to team phoenix here absolutely that was a that was a nice try. I mean, that was a good push from Phoenix to Garage and a, a, a valiant effort from Katana to try and hold it back. He had a lot of utility to work with, the, the concussions, the blinds, and everything. And he managed to get, I believe, Seha off that aftershock. Mm -hmm. And uh, a nice try, but in the end, the better guns in the hands of Team Phoenix, and it's going to be two one in favor of Cloud Six still. And it's going to be uh, yeah, the rifles now in the hands of Cloud Six as we head on into round number four. Indeed, and um, uh, looks like another even game on our hands here. Recon Dot, uh, a bit too far out in my opinion, but um, uh, not really going to catch anyone out. So, Snuff uh, will read that out. He was hiding in the corner. He pops up uh, ultimate as well. Snuff will find two guys. Managed to get the trade on to Seha only. It's a 3v4 for the retake. A tough one for them to retake now. Walled off. Interesting wall again. Um, Leaving I mean, the gap there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, leaving a gap as well as uh, giving free entry into the site as well because you can't see anyone who is entering into the site unless you're holding on the other side of uh, the boxes there. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, it's, it's quite risky because you know you can actually clear off one side without getting contested mm -hmm. uh, yep. from a short. But then there's this angle for Smurf to play across. I guess they're trying to you know, bait the place to actually push it without clearing that corner. I mean, maybe that's their plan, but still, it's working out for them, and it's going to be two to trying to save their rifles. Oh, but never mind. But uh, Smurf has other things to say. He picks up one. He's looking for more here. Uh, Gurami is going to be holding this. Uh, will he be able to find that kill? Is going to be the question. Oh, he spots him out. Uh, no, no, no. Gurami will put him down. Will find Oxy as well. Gets two quick kills. But it does not really matter because Team Phoenix will have the money to buy up yet again uh, after winning their uh, second round after the buy round. So they are going to be having money. Whereas uh, Cloud6 are going to be in a bit of a iffy situation, they will f manage to uh, give away a rifle. Gurami looking to pick up ultimate orb or a, uh, a kill with the headhunter to be able to get his 24s to play around with this round. So only two handles coming out, uh, half shields on Katana, a sheriff in the hands of the Sage and Gaz with an Ares. And did you realize that Seha is still playing the judge? <laughs> I did. And on a map like Haven, I, I guess it kind of works, but I mean, he, he is making it work. Once again, and rush towards the A side is going to be Aviv, the first player to try and contest this, and then we'll take it out immediately. And the recon, perfect. Seha coming behind him will take down Guram. It's a quick plant. There's a 5v3 in this post plant for Cloud6. And it's a 3v5. We have a flank coming in from the Sova here. But uh, it is being held by the Yoru for the time being. I mean, yeah, I just realized Team Phoenix does not have a Centaur. So... Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? You want it watching this? Seha will get hit in the back here. And, um. But still, it's a 4v3. And Yoru still Hello? going forward. Hello? Hello? Katana Katana finds Smurf as well. Hello? No, no, no. Hello? Wait, 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 wait. What is happening? They killed everyone. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have seen confusing things, but I have never seen a team that confused though. I mean, they knew the Sage was on Haven there. I mean, uh, yeah, on Haven. And he got three kills for free. What? Indeed, I mean, I feel like if there was a few more seconds left on the clock, they would have touched it. Or maybe, you know, because the clock ran out, they decided to drop the average IQ of the team by a bit, <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, this round it has is to be a lot. Crazy. I don't think that's a bit even at that point. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, but still, yeah, Team Phoenix doesn't have a sample, so if Cloud Six can be a bit fast on the flank, they could potentially oh, it's a fast B push coming out now. Say how the Charger and the first. Don't get delayed though, quite a bit. 
but he will find smurf there so that's the first pick that sage going to pick through and seha with the judge will find that kill hunter spirit going to get pop adib finds another two persona and seha both getting taken down adib looking for more here they are stuck outside of the and looking at the wrong angle the smoke runs out uh, and dead will get taken out the wall up and the aftershock going to be pushing out oxy oxy will find the kill onto adib with the headshot in a 1v3 uh actually a 1v2 and a half or two and a quarter at this point is so low the shock darts pushing him off the angle good shock darts coming out from the sewer another one the damage again is ah, insane the recon is going to spot him out he was on the reload so he's not going to be able to uh, take it out could have switched into uh the uh pistol but he is going to get pushed by uh chamber i think just pull him out and there we go Burami he had the heal on him but wouldn't have made a difference uh, with the 24 in the hands of rami there uh picking up another kill there he's up to six kills already Ajib, uh, the man of the round there with uh, picking up three kills there, but still, uh, I mean, I, I guess Gurami can buy up for him, but uh, their eco doesn't look that great. Uh, Gads also can buy up for the Sage, but now Team Phoenix is uh, forced into a weaker uh, scrap buy here because uh, we have Smurf on a Sheriff, we have uh, Undead. Uh, looking, to, what is he going to play? Are they all going to save? I mean, Undead can buy up this round, at least into a Spectre. Yeah, he, he, could, he could go for a hero buy, maybe, because he does have enough credits uh, for the next round as well. But looking to save, I guess, maybe he might try an operator for one round or the next. But so far, the classics in hand. Just manages for one play, which is up these. And Paranoia in the hands, he's going to be using that uh, slow up, but going to go down a deep. The flash going to be good, but not good enough by Ladi. Flashed up, takes out one. Senna finds one with the frenzy. But that's going to be the team. all the way in garage picks up a vandal not going to be able to get it rami puts him down and that is going to be cloud six taking the lead for the first time that's indeed once again an extremely close game four three is a scoreline cloud six is in the front but barely and looking at both these two teams so we've got the rolling thunder in the hands of cloud six alongside the rose if they need be and team phoenix i i guess they could use supreme so they have the uh the orbital strike as well as uh I forget what the fate alt is called, but they have a lot of stuff to work with. Nightmare, uh, right? Exactly, the nightmare, I believe. Uh, so they have utility to take the site. They have utility for a post plan. They just need to get in position uh, to make great use of it. And once again, looking to be an A execute from the side of Team Phoenix. Contested by three players, or rather two players on long. I think he's not going to be cleared here. He might once go again, huge the prowler here. Finds one, finds one, find two. Finds the third, Adib going huge there, uh, finds three quick kills, making it a 3v3. There were a couple of trades there, but uh, good god, Adib, uh, no one cleared the angle. Yeah, the, the trigger discipline of this man to wait for the two players of plus, and also to get the, the, to get the spray transfer on the three players, it's, it's really great. And it's going to be a 3v3. Crosshairs that we're seeing, did you see that other crosshair? There is like a horizontal line is like really long. Uh, so... I did, I did. <laughs> I, I believe that was uh, in the hands of... Uh, this. Here. Your right is into the sign, finds one, finds the second player as well. They're looking to regs. The blinds peek through the sage. Finds one, but Oxy will find one, and now it's a 1v2 here. The resurrection comes out, makes it a 1v3. But Gurami, in the meantime, has found out Persona and puts him down, taking a two round lead. Now. Okay, but I will also bring my own. No offense. Yeah, well played by uh, the Omen there. Uh, hiding inside of uh, blocks in a long was not cleared by the prowler once again now uh, I, I guess we ha we've had some misses uh, by undead when it comes to prowling the corners mm -hmm. i mean to be fair i i believe it was uh the sova gaz who did bait the prowler away from Adi. yeah and Adi was able to capitalize on that get three kills and uh, and was able to save the round for the team so good work all around and the scoreline is 5-3 this time we might see the nightmare being used to get into this side. The blind uh, picks uh, C long here. They are going to be rushing into the side. And uh, Gurami is not going to be cleared, I feel like. Nope. Even the Prowler is too, too deep below him. He shoots the Yoru. He does shoot it, so still no information as to where Gurami is. Nightmare going to be used as well, and now that is going to give information. But no one clears it? No. Okay, please look up. You can see that it's going up. I think now he has an idea. Yes, he does. But Adib uh, holding Adib the corner will get two. We'll get three rather. It's going to be and a look at the sages. Last player standing. How is he in spawn? What? <laughs> what are these yes, rounds? Right now? Say hi with the judge once again. Left alone, a judge and a dream. 
Can he be uh, the judgment that uh, gotcha. Team Phoenix nearly finds one? Uh, just to pick up uh, Wangle. And that is his position known. And uh, yeah, Team Cloud6 is going to relocate accordingly. Should spot him. Yes, he does. He does get tagged by Katana. And India Gurami from below will take down Sad. It's going to be 6 3 for the side of Cloud6 holding on and doing a really good job at it right now. Failing to be the executioner in that situation, just a judge. But uh, we do have uh, Cloud6 uh, building up a com comfortable buffer, at least for the time being. Uh, it is going to be another gun round coming out uh, from the side. Oh, uh, Smurf does not have the money, actually. Hmm. Uh, my, uh, going in for the naked bundle, just because he does have uh, the Empress to work with. Uh, Oxy is going to buy up a, to a Spectre and no shields. I'm not sure why he's not buying shields, because everyone else is bought up full. But uh, Recon Dutch uh, spots out Gasly, manages to get that into all five players started out with that. Oh god. Right here. And Empress is going to get right pumped here. by the Rena and they're going to be a full-on re <laughs> rotate out of that side just because all five were spotted out. Yep, so far C is empty and it looks like that is where Team Phoenix is looking to focus their attention on. The wall will come up, clearing off Garage, so it, it will I believe it's gonna be a fire by first time. Never mind, uh, the Sage will take down Smurf and Gurami who's going to follow. Seiha will lose his life, but in the end, uh, manages to take Sage with the Orbital Strike. The wall has been broken, so they're going to be pushing forward. Undead finds one, but Gurami for the trade as well. It's a 2v3 now. i uh, make that a 2v2. He has to go for a reload. He's stuck in this area, but he finds another Gurami. He gets Oxy in turn. Yoru versus Gurami and Gurami gets the better trade there and he will find the kill so they don't get the plant it's a 7-3 uh, going into the 11th round the last two rounds of the first half is game number two I, I was a bit confused when persona was looking around because uh, i thought you know Gurami got two kills from that corner inside of c mm -hmm. and yet uh persona was a bit confused about where the shots were coming from uh so yeah but still a good run from both Gurami and the Sage to capitalize on it. And it's going to be 7 3 as we head on into round number 11 of the first half. Yeah, and uh, the thing here is that uh, Yoru hasn't been really working out. He's just on one kill right now. Uh, they haven't been able to utilize his Yoru, to, uh, Yoru effectively. Uh, we haven't seen these, uh, you know, big teleport uh, flash plays and Adib pushing forward uh, through swords. will find that kill onto Smurf. They're not expecting. I need to have pushed far that much and no one really covering that push as well. Uh, they are outside of B, of uh, the team of Team Phoenix. They're waiting for the wall to, uh, to break, I believe. They're trying to push as soon as it does. And so far, there's two players Enemy of locked. Cloud6 stacked inside of B. And there you go, the recon comes in. The, dr uh, the, the, the drone comes in, rather. And players will get spotted. Yeah, we'll find one with the operator Katana oh. finds two quick kills. Ooh. Three quick kills. Nice shot, and good use of utility by uh, the last Sova as well as the, the Breach to clean that round up. And it's an 8 3. Going into the last round, are we going to see the 9 3 curse or is it going to be an 8 4 half? Uh, Team Phoenix desperately needs this. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. So, operator in the hands of uh, the Sova, by the looks of it, not the chamber. Actually, Katana has an operator as well. What? Are they running multiple ops? Katana I mean, finds it is one working. Say how it gets taken down. Okay, there you go. And it's going to be a full stack rush going towards the seaside. They managed to get in. They lose one play in the process, but. Oh, nice shot. They're done right. Finds one, find, does not find the next uh, smoke. It's going to be the good for the trade, but Adi with a quick one, too. Uh, will put them down, leaving the fade in a 1v4 and an impossible clutch here. He finds one, but Adi is going to be good for the trade, finding the kills and getting into, get closing out the first half of this game number two. And it's going to be 9 3 as we head on into the second half. So, Terra, that was a. Uh, so, the first game. Ascent was a bit more closer than this. It was 6-6 at the end of the first half. So in the end, Cloud6 did win, but it was a really close game. So far, Cloud6 have been absolutely dominant. It's, it's a 9-3 half, so that is the curse number, but still, uh, they do have a significant lead over uh, the other team, the opposing team, as we head on into the second half. So what do you think uh, that they can do differently to make a comeback on this game? 
I think it's just gunplay here, right? Uh, because uh, Heaven is a bit, uh, I mean, you do have close angles, but uh, yeah, you uh, you do have longer angles as well. And I, I feel like the gunplay coming out from uh, Team Cloud6 has been a lot better uh, than Team Phoenix in this uh, map. But we'll have to wait mm. and see. But uh, we will be heading into a very short break. Uh, do stay tuned in. We'll be back with the second half of gear number two right after this. What makes a nation great? Is it the richness of its heritage, the beauty of its natural bounty, the state of its state of the art, or is it the strength of its connections? The bonds that bind us, that make us truly Sri Lankan, as the country's leader in digital technology. We understand that we're better when we come together and that we're at our best when we champion each other's success. For decades, SLT Mobitel has been linking Sri Lankan lives spearheading Sri Lanka's technological transformation and uniting the nation. Whatever the future may look like, or wherever it may take us, we'll always be right here, connecting you to the things you care most about. SLT Mobitel, the connection. And welcome back, guys, to Gear Up, uh, the Inter-School Esports Championship by Royal College Colombo Computer Society. And you're joining us for game number two of the Warren semi-final number two. Second half, it is Wesley College Colombo taking on Isipatana College. And it's a 9-3 half in favor of Wesley College Colombo. Uh, it was a very tight game in game number one on ascent, but uh, Haven seems to be getting out of hand for team uh, Phoenix here. Cloud6 uh, putting up a very dominant performance, especially the Chamber and uh, even uh, the Breach and the Sova making things uh, really difficult for uh, the side of team Phoenix. Even Adib uh, fragging out really hard holding those close angles. Uh, but uh, with that, we have the game resuming back up. It's uh, going to be Cloud6 on the attack and team Phoenix on the defense. I'll find you. So to start things off, it's going to be three players of Team Phoenix stuck towards the A side and an early aggression here from Adib trying to pick off Seha, but no Seha managed to get one and immediately gets re by Katana with a frenzy in hand. But look at this, three players from Cloud6 have made their way towards C-Long and uh, Phoenix has fallen for this bait immensely and the players go back in. But look at the oh, nice Gurami, shot coming from Gurami, takes down Persona and the side is spike free planted. for the spike. It's going to be a 4v3 in this retake, and the spike is planted long. 
Gurami stays back a bit too much and Smurf will get the kill and will overheal as well. Finds another as well, it's 2v3 now. They are playing for the long area, they do have a uh, concussed there coming in from Garage. Uh, they still haven't stuck the strike, it's a 2v3 though. Stop that time, delaying as much as possible, meanwhile coming in from behind. Uh, they are delaying remaining. this so much, they do find it, but leaving the last man alive, trying to stick the defuse. And Gads yeah, will find the diffuser. Uh, this is insane delays coming out. And finally the kill will fall and they will not get the diffuse off. They delayed so much, the utility. Well played from Gaz and Kisana that round. Yeah. Uh, he actually went for the diffuser when he peeked. Uh, there were three people, uh, technically two, looking at him uh, while Fade was diffusing. And he took his shots on the fade, managed to land them while he was uh, fading out of there. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a really good play coming out from Gaz as well as Katana there. Uh, the utility utilization from these two has been really good this entire map. Yes, Adib is uh, top fragging here, but uh, I need to mention Gurami's aim as well as Katana and Gaz uh, using his, their utility to absolute perfection. Yes, indeed. Yes, and and uh, I believe yeah. the side of Team Phoenix forced this round, no? I guess not. Uh, Oxy does get reconned, will have to move up from his position, and it's going to be a quick B hit coming in from the side of Cloud 6. Katana will spot Oxy, but no, the classic is good enough to take him down. Sage will take care of Undead. But Smurf is going to be good for the kill. Now it's a 3v2. Again, advantage for the side of Team Phoenix, the Flash. Persona finds Ghastly, making it a 2v1 now. Uh, leaving Rami. Giving them the, giving him the one we want. They have the spike. I'm not sure why Sena, pu Sena pushed out. And jump. now Persona is left to clutch this in a one we won here against Gurami. Uh, scary man uh, on any weapon by the looks of it. He's on a bulldog against the Spectre, I think, or was it on a ghost? I believe. I, know, I believe Persona has a gun as well. But the question is, which player decides I to pick it spike. first? I think he peeks through. Back. He saw him. And Gurami will clean it out, making it 11-3 in favor of Cloud6. And Team Phoenix in all sorts of trouble here. They do have their first Byron coming out and an immediate uh, timeout called by a deep. I'm not sure why. Uh, wait. A deep call the timeout. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yep. A weird decision coming in from them. But maybe it's a bit of a different issue. But rather, the scoreline is 11-3 Cloud6. Uh, that was uh, a first round. But still, uh, they did lose a few guns in the round. Only... Gurami was alive at the end, so heading on into the third round of this second half, uh, Team Phoenix should be able to buy those uh, five rifles that they so desperately need, and it's going to be maybe a first round coming in from the side of uh, Team uh, uh, Cloud6, we will have to see that, or maybe it's going to be an eco from them as we head on into the 15th round of the game. It did a uh, uh, tough position for Team Phoenix to be in. They need to, uh, you know, uh, make a massive comeback. Uh, not unheard of, but uh, they have their work mm -hmm. cut out for them. Uh, I mean, the three nine curse can reign supreme. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, Team Phoenix definitely needs to uh, step it up here. Again, uh, I, I think it's uh, just more of the fact that the the team coordination coming out from Cloud Six and uh, uh, has been uh, better than what Team Phoenix has, and also the gunplay from uh, yeah, T uh, Cloud Six has been really good on Gurami and Adi both. Uh, the gunplay coming out from them has been Out impeccable, especially Gurami. I think we saw him hitting some insane uh, flicks and uh, overall shots uh, throughout the entire uh, two matches so far. But with that, we have the uh, resumption of his persona. He's going to be on the marshal Looking for a kill, not going to find it. Peak too wide, and Gurami will put him down, making it a 5v4 into the side here. Recon gets spotted out, gets broken down. Gurami will TP out. And they are no going charges. to be backing off. Uh, is, is this a bait and switch is going to be the question. Adib is lurking through uh, B here. He is trying to get inside B. Uh, we have Smurf who is going to be holding on to the A side for the time being. But uh, things have slowed down. But uh, Adib here looking for the Sage. Sage does spot Adib out. Uh, does not really do any damage. Open so They are going to be pushing in. Uh, and they have flashed. One dead. Uh, Smurf will find Gaz and Oxy will find the kill on Radib as well. So what's inside that aftershock? But Katana coming in from behind will find Smurf here and leaving uh, the last man safe. One, uh, one with two will find one. He Spike does not have a heal for some time. Picks the wrong angle and Gurami will put Oxy down. 
Making uh, Foxy. it 11-3. Made a valiant effort, but he had too many, uh, you know, angles to clear that inside of B. Uh, I believe he got a 2k or a 3k from B, but yeah. in the end, Gurami coming behind him uh, cleaned things up, and it's going to be match point for Cloud6. And I yeah. believe it's going to be a broken by rather uh, forced by coming in from the side of Team Phoenix as well, uh, trying to claw their way back into the game. The side of Cloud6, yeah. of course, stacked, as well as uh, the Tour de Force and the Hunter's Free to work with uh, for this round. Uh, this round for the Grand Finals here for Cloud6. Uh, can they make it happen? Cloud6 won the first round. Gurami puts Seah uh, down already off a good start. Can they make their way into the Grand Finals to face off against Lyson College? Uh, Ajib will find Persona as well. Already down on numbers on the side of Team Phoenix. Uh, Sage will get put down by Oxy who does use the... Uh, sorry, Hunter's Fury, Smurf, in the meantime, finds Gurami, a big kill to have, but he's going to get backstabbed. He does not clear the... Uh, he does not actually place behind him. He will clear out the Raj. Adib has moved himself into uh, outside of C. We'll find Undead here. Uh, Smurf will find Adib. He's in a 1v3. Can he clash it or can he ace this to win? Is the question. He's getting pushed from Garage as well. He's trying to go into the side. He's getting pushed from behind. Finds another. Finds a kill onto the stage, but he's getting pushed from behind. He's not going to be expecting this. He gets shot though. Now he knows. He taps it once. Uh, the fault, fault line is going to be there. Not getting pushed from time being flash. is going to be there. He picks up another. Up onto four kills. The recount out is on him, he's not going to get spammed, he manages to have it, peeks through, manages to get the ace on Smurf to clash the round, I thought it was all over, but he manages to chase it, to bring it back for Team Phoenix, good god. It was indeed what a round from the rain out from Team Phoenix to keep the team still inside the game. An amazing clutch from him, as you said, and uh, he managed to pick those angles perfectly, getting those kills as needed, and in the end, maintaining his calm and cool, and uh, making it 12-4. Still have a lot to do, but uh, making and giving a bit of hope for Team Phoenix to still stay in the game. Yeah, and aces Queen, in those type of situations back. are extremely hard because you're under so much pressure, clearing, trying to clear out so many angles. Uh, you you're the only play, man standing. Aces in a round that, you know, you have your teammates alive is a different story altogether, but that ace was insane coming out from uh, Smurf there. And you look at this. Look at Seha getting all that control already in A. He does have uh, the TP and the trap to worry about, but if he does have a judge in hand, it could be catastrophic for the side of Team Phoenix, or rather for Cloud6. And he's made his way behind him, but no Katana. Was waiting for it, and he does spot him, and he does take Seha down. So it does get spotted inside of Garage. The recon should be enough to push him back for a bit. Uh, meanwhile, Ajib uh, on a pistol by the looks of it, uh, will get himself into uh, Seaside. Uh, yeah, he's on a uh, Sheriff here. And meanwhile, Sova is outside uh, inside the garage. Meanwhile, Gads with the judge will find Persona uh, inside garage. And uh, they need to be careful here. It's a 3v5 now. They need to take this carefully. The Leah out. The Rolling Thunder going to be used, but Smurf manages to find the kill onto Katana. Gads in the meantime with the classic will find Oxy here, making it a 2v4. Can Smurf bring this back yet again? They will get the plan. He has the better guns, and uh, Gurami is really low, even though he does have the 2v4 in his hands. Gaz playing it ever so dangerously. I, he does have a in his hands. And oh know. my god, that is so close, but Smurf will pick that kill up. Now it makes it a 2v3 now. They are playing against the clock though, since the spike has been planted. Uh, Gurami extremely low on HP, but he has a 2v4, so it's going to be a lot Enemy easier for him down. to deal with. Undead will find a Dib here, making it a 2v2. They are both Still long. Uh, Touch it once. Gurami will find Smurf there with the 24s. This might be all over. Is Cloud6 going to be get, uh, able to get themselves into the Grand Finals? Attackers and yes, they win. do. We have us. It's going to be Cloud6 closing out game number two in very convincing fashion. Uh, we had Smurf uh, on that Reyna trying to bring it back with that ace on the previous round. It almost looked possible, but that 24 is putting a stop into all of that. And they will close it out and get themselves into the grand finals. But of course, uh, it was a good effort coming out from Team Phoenix from Isipatana College. Uh, they did have a very close game on game number one. But, you know, uh, game number two not uh, working uh, to their advantage, Gide. Yes, indeed. That was a really close first game, but in the end, that is uh, in the favor of Cloud6 as they head on into the Grand Finals on the 8th of December uh, to face off uh, Alpha Q. Indeed, and that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, I feel like uh, that might be another close game. I feel like uh, uh, Cloud6 does have 
the required uh, skills as well as the team coordination to bring it to Alpha Q. Right now, from the four teams that we saw here today, Alpha Q looks extremely dominant. Uh, it's going to be a tough one uh, in the grand finals, but I think Cloud6 has. Uh, does have it and they have time to prepare against the play style coming out from Alpha Q as well. So you'll have to wait and see on the 8th of December, the LAN event that is happening at 1.30 in the afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that's going to be a big one. But uh, for those of you who are joining in and who wants to witness more esports action coming your way, do join us again tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. for the Call of Duty Mobile uh, uh, semifinals, which is going to be happening tomorrow. That's going to be another interesting one. And of course, the finals of that will also take place on the 8th of December, which is a Thursday next week. Uh, but having said that, a massive shout out to uh, everyone at home who was watching and uh, who was supporting their schools as well as their friends and uh, players that they like. Uh, you guys have been absolutely amazing. A massive shout out to our uh, a massive shout out to Lenovo as well for powering the entire event. Do check out the Legion series of laptops. They are absolutely insane. Uh, they are some of the best laptops that you can buy in terms of reliability. I can personally attest to it myself since I used mine for like seven years. So do check it out if you are in the market for a new laptop. Uh, shout out to all our other sponsors as well. Uh, our esports partner, Kimrod LK, who has been the pioneer of esports uh, since 2007 in the country, doing so many, so many events across the years and doing a lot of work to, uh, you know, develop uh, esports as a whole inside the country as well uh, and outside of uh, the country as well. And also our gold sponsor, SLT Mobitel, the fastest broadband connection in the country that you can get. There is no better connection that you can game on or stream on or download or whatever you like to do. SLT Mobitel Fiber is the way to go, giving you the lowest latency as well as the fastest download speeds in the country. Also to our technology partners from Royal College, the media unit, the photography unit, uh, the radio society as well. You guys have been absolutely amazing joining up with the computer society to make this all happen. And uh, last but not least, the display partner, laptop.lk, for joining up uh, with the Royal College Computer Society to make this happen. And um, also shout out uh, to the production crew uh, behind the scenes. You guys have been absolutely amazing. It's really good stuff coming out at a school level. Uh, really well done overall. And also for the referees, uh, also these are the guys behind the scenes who are doing all the work. So shout out to you guys as well. And thank you, Kitty, so much for joining me. It has been uh, really fun casting with you after such a long time. And thank you so much for joining me. But with that, we will be saying goodbye until I see you again tomorrow with the Call of Duty Mobile uh, semifinals. See you guys. Bye.